spiked out I could trip a referee Tell by my attitude That I most definitely from Hello everybody, hello and welcome to This Week in Startups. It's episode number 38. We're coming up on episode 50. When we hit episode 50, everybody knows what happens. Tyler, tell them what happens at episode 50. I haven't decided. Right. But something should happen at episode 50. We should have a big party. Yeah. Why don't we live do... Live in the studio? We should do a live party. Should we do it here in San Francisco where the more of the crowd is? Maybe episode 50 is going to be 12 weeks from now. 12 weeks from now would be... I think that's October of 2017. Get that far. If we get, get that far. No, 12 weeks from now will be what? Is that April? Three months. Three months, something like that. So maybe we, if somebody out there is listening and they have a large space like an auditorium in San Francisco that we can use, maybe in Palo Alto, maybe Sunnyvale, if somebody like at a corporation had a conference center <laughs> similar to, say, Microsoft's conference center or, I don't know, the... Yeah, that seats 500, and they wanted to buy drinks for everybody. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. If somebody out there has a big corporate center and they want to host the 50th episode, maybe we could have some big name on, you know, have some huge uh, person on. But wow, the show's don't going great. Uh, tons of feedback on the show. It's been pretty amazing, and um, the number of people watching live, the number of downloads, is really increasing now. And people loved this week in Android last week. Uh, it was a little bit, you know, it was it was first show, uh, but we're going to do like ten shows. So the, we're going to do all the niche shows that, let's say, Leo Laporte hasn't done. So I'm basically clearing with Leo of this week in tech. Hey, are you going to do an Android show? Leo says, No, we're not going to do an Android show. Do an Android show. So I was like, Hey, are you going to do a cloud computing show? And he's like, Probably not. So I think we're going to do this week in cloud computing maybe next. Uh, and maybe one this week in search. So basically, I'm taking all the niche technology shows that don't exist and trying to do them here uh, with This Week In, which is a new company that we're starting with myself, Kevin Pollack, and another person who will be the CEO of that company. I'm not going to be CEO of it. I'm CEO of Mahalo, obviously. Um, and we're going to try to do 10 technology-based shows. So if you have ideas for that, you can just send an email to me, Jason at Mahalo, or Jason at Calacanis, or at Jason. If you want to be the host of one of these shows, you can email me as well. Send me a clip. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, we would like the person to be in Santa Monica, and we're going to do, you know, what Leo does. A um, little bit of a crazy week last couple of days, no? Tyler? Yeah. There was this whole uh, new device came out. A new device came out, everybody knows, yeah. that the new Nokia 2750B uh, came out, gorgeous. Uh, now supports uh, 100 and I think. 290 characters on text as crazy instead of 260. As, as crazy as this pun is, I think it does flash. <laughs> it does do flash, yes. It's crazy. Uh, no, of course the iPad came out with a terrible name this week. And for those of you guys who know, uh, who were on Twitter with me, on there was a little shenanigans that went on on Thursday night. Was it Tuesday night? Thursday. It's Tuesday night. Yeah. Tuesday night because Wednesday is a big announcement. Yeah. So Tuesday night, I'm in bed with my wife uh, with London Athena, my seven-week-old, I'm exhausted. You can tell right now I'm exhausted. I mean, I, I've got about eight pounds of makeup on, and you can still see the bags in my eyes. I slept three hours last night with the baby, and seven weeks old. I mean, having a kid is the greatest thing in the world. You will not sleep at certain points, but it gets better, uh, I'm told. And I, and I have to believe that, because it, it can't possibly get worse than being up three times at night and sleeping three hours. I mean, three, ugh. I'm exhausted. Should I just host this? Exactly. If you could, if somebody else could host the show today. So if I do those long pauses where I go, you know what my favorite part I'll just was of what we were talking about. That's my Kevin Pollock. You know he does that during his show, Kevin Pollock's chat show. Uh, anyway, and the funny thing is when I do that, The guys think that the Ustream is frozen, or the people at home think the Ustream <laughs> is frozen. <laughs> so everybody starts reloading. Go, what, what's going on? Uh, anyway, so I, for those of you who were on my tweet, you know what happened. I was tweeting like, hey, I have the Apple iTablet. I've had it for 10 days. It is amazing. It has two cameras in it, one facing forward, one facing back. So you can do virtual, uh, you, can, you can do augmented reality video conferencing. Now, I made that term up while I was in bed on my Twitter at 1 o'clock in the morning or whatever, midnight. It, it doesn't exist, obviously, Tyler. Right. Augmented reality exists. Video conferencing exists. I, well, I don't even know what augmented reality means, right? So then I say it's got a solar pad for charging on the back. No device has a solar. There's no laptop that solar charges. 
there's no such thing as augmented reality video conferencing, although I'm sure somebody right now is working on it now that I've mentioned it, which I guess would be you see my world, I see your world, and our avatars are layered into the real world or yeah. something. I don't know. You touch braids. You touch then braids, and then it connects, and <laughs> yeah. I, I see you, Todd. Right. <laughs> see you. Um, anyway, then next I say that it's got... Um, wireless charging. I say that it's got biometrics on each side so it knows your fingerprint. It has facial recognition so when you hand it to another memory family it changes the desktop instantly. An HDTV tuner and a PVR <laughs> and you know and it, wireless charging and, and then it's got a Farmville game that you shake it to seed the seeds and then you, you wobble the thing to, to irrigate it and then my livestock if we had a mesh network of games or livestock would go across all of them and that Mark Pincus was going to be a part of the Steve Jobs keynote. And I go to bed. I phone rings at six thirty in the morning. It's Mark Pincus. I immediately send it to voicemail. He's a friend of mine, so I'm, I'm not worried about it. But the baby's asleep, so I run out. I, I'm drinking coffee. I, I text him. I'll call you in a minute. I call him. He goes, "What's going on?" I said, "What do you mean what's going on?" He goes, "Everybody thinks I'm doing this keynote with Steve Jobs. I'm not doing a <laughs> keynote with Steve Jobs. What do you, is Steve Jobs want me to do a keynote with that? What's going on?" I said, "It was a joke." He goes, "I know, but everybody thinks it's true. Did you see the journal?" I said. I have the journal right here, and I pull it up on my thing, and there's a story <laughs> in the journal where they list the seven, eight things that I said were going to be in the iTablet. And I said to myself, who wrote this story at the Wall Street Journal? He, that's $1,000 in components. That's $1,000 in components. Okay, let's go through it. PVR, HDTV tuner. That's got to be $50 to $100 of that size. A DVR means you have to have a very large hard drive. That, that's got to be $100 or whatever. Two video cameras, fifty to seventy-five dollars a piece. Now you're at a hundred, another hundred fifty dollars. The biometric pads would be twenty-five to seventy-five dollars each, and there's two of them. Uh, it, wireless uh, charging that's got to be fifty dollars for that component, hundred dollars for that component. Solar panels have got to be a hundred dollars. Now we're at seven, eight, nine hundred dollars easily. It's not. It's not so much the, the cost; it's the size and the weight. Yes, <laughs> and each of those components weighs a couple of ounces, and a tablet has to be under two pounds. The MacBook Air is three or four. We're talking about six, seven, eight pounds worth of stuff. Not count, and then not counting the fact that the battery life on this would be about eight minutes with those things. I mean, I do like having facial recognition and yeah. thumbprint recognition, yeah. though, because right. that would be handy if you don't have thumbs. Well, no. If somebody, the, the reason they has it has that, and I didn't get a chance to tweet this, is if somebody cuts your thumbs off right. and puts both your thumbs on your your cut off thumbs, and then has. Uh, you know, tries to log in, they right. won't be able to unless the they've also cut your face off like <laughs> Silence of the Lambs or, <laughs> or face off. Right. Or face off yeah. or like Mission Impossible right. the where yep. they make the thing. Yeah, good point. Exactly. So yeah. it's, it is possible. Because Apple's, Apple's really into that well, redundant kind yeah. of, yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> huge big thing. And then everybody starts blaming me yesterday. Oh my God, you lost all your credibility. I will never trust you again. I'm like, <laughs> number one, why are you trusting me for anything? What, who am I? <laughs> I'm just a dumbass. I'm an entrepreneur. What are you trusting me for? Am I your priest? Am I your... Trust yourself. You don't need to trust me. Trust yourself. You shouldn't be trusting any journalist, any well, pundit. I think they think of Steve as, you know, Jesus Steve. Right. And you're the apostle. All right. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> there, uh, and then all of this, putting aside the laws of physics and economics for a second, yes. let's assume that Steve Jobs can take the laws of physics and bend them, yeah. take the laws of economics and deconstruct them. What about the fact that there has never, ever been an Apple beta program that 99.9999% of employees at Apple don't get to see the products before they come out? Literally, there's seven people who know about these products before they come out, and the people who are working on different components don't even know what they're building. I mean, and I've written critical things about Steve Jobs. I've talked about critical things on the show. It's impossible. I, I just don't under how. It's not possible that I would get a tablet ten days before. The punchline is, a person. I'm not gonna say who right now. Um, asked a person who is close to Steve, "Did you give Jason a tablet?" And Steve Jobs responded back, "I didn't beep beep beep." Beeping Jason, beep, 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 or something to that effect. I don't know the exact language, but <coughs> I, it was a beep, beep, beeping I think the Jason, ta- beeping Calacanis. The tablet has auto deletion of It does. Auto of it does it's like an auto, yeah. that's like safe search. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. uh, so it automatically does that. So anyway, Steve Jobs has to respond to this at 1 in the morning. And then I read that online, oh, and then also there's voicemails, which I should have queued up, from CNBC. <laughs> New York Times, 
didn't call, but they wrote a story on it. CNN wrote a story on it. CNBC's calling the guy Jim Goldman's calling like every 15 minutes. My phone, literally every 15 minutes, the phone from seven o'clock to nine o'clock is ringing from CNBC, begging to get me on to talk about the tablet before Steve Jobs does. I, if I wasn't under NDA, if I was, and then I said on my tweet, I am going to be doing the press for it. That's why Steve gave me the tablet 10 days early. This is the most absurd thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, CNN, printed. What does this say? What does it mean? Uh, our friend, Lauren Feldman, who we haven't had on the show yet, but we do need to have on the show, uh, made a video of it. And I'm going to show you that right now. It's a pretty compelling video. It, and you know what else is very compelling? Bing. Bing is extremely compelling. They've got new maps out. If you haven't seen it already, there is a tweet map. And the tweet map, I'm going to give me one second while I try to find it here. But this allows you to uh, see Twitter on their map program. And uh, by the way, they're sponsoring the Perfect Pitch Contest. Uh, a little confusion about what exactly this is and the dates, because dates are important. Anybody who's on Shark Tank, uh, and you have to get your pitch in by February 16th, and it has to be a pitch between January 22nd, which is last week's show, and the February 19th show. There's a couple of shows in there, like a month of shows. We're going to pick the best pitch. Myself, Tyler, Lon, whatever, the crew are going to pick the best pitch. If you win that best pitch, then the winner is going to get a half day of PR consulting with a Seattle-based ad agency called Creature. I'm guessing this is like 10 G's worth of stuff. So your little tiny startup, whether it was Geekstack in the past or any of the great uh, people who've pitched, imagine getting a $10,000 free consultation. It's pretty cool. And you will have won the Bing Perfect Pitch Contest. Uh, pretty cool. They've been a great sponsor. As you guys know, they're crushing it with all the different uh, features of their service. We've talked about video. We've talked about images. We've talked about the Faircaster. We've talked about the maps, everything. Uh, let's hear what Lauren Feldman said about the insanity. Lauren Feldman, 1938 Media. We're still on. I want to have a calm, relaxed discussion with you about what happened yesterday and this whole debacle with Jason and the iPad and what really happened, okay? Let's stay calm for a moment. Jason started tweeting complete nonsense. Nonsense. Silly, silly, funny, funny things about what the iPad can do and what it can't do and the specs and all of that. It was obviously a joke. You really would have to really know nothing about tech at all. I mean at all. To think that he was telling the truth. What happened was a bunch of writers in their desperation to be first and get hits and get traffic just reported it verbatim. Now, a lot of guys in the journalism business today are trying to blame Jason. How can you possibly blame Jason? You did no due diligence at all. You didn't call Jason. You didn't call anybody from Apple, right? You probably didn't call anybody at all. You just saw it and you ran with it. And you did it because you were desperate to be first and get some Google juice and all of that. Now, there's a, a two-pronged problem here. The first is what I just mentioned. No fact-checking and a desperation to be first. The other thing is, and this is what these other journalists, crybabies, are crying about who are trying to, you know, blame it on Jason, is that you have no business covering the tech beat if you can't realize that something like that's a joke instantly. You shouldn't have to fact check even to know that he was kidding. If you're a technology reporter, you should have some rudimentary understanding of your beat, right? I mean, if you're a tech guy, you should know a little bit about Apple. I mean, would they really give Jason Calacanis a pad before? Serious. Okay, just pause it because I want to start. I'm going to keep playing it, whatever mark it was at. But there is a very good point here. How could you not know from the specs as a tech journalist that this is not physically possible? Right, Tyler? I mean, it's just obvious. You, you didn't see me writing it. You don't <laughs> deserve your job in tech journalism. You're printing this. And the really great tech journalists in Gadget didn't fall for it. They emailed me, they knew it was a joke. 
Kara Swisher knew it was a joke. All the great top tech journalists, Walt Mossberg, everybody knows it's a joke. If you printed it, I am scared. Why would you print a joke as fact and then blame me for what you did? I made a joke. Everybody laughed at the joke. You did no journalism or reporting, and then you're blaming me? The problem that is... That I lose credibility? The problem is you didn't put the pound sarcasm at the end of each yeah. tweet. Oh, yes, That's of course, because <laughs> you know what? In the terms of... Actually, there's a very good point that Tyler makes, and most people don't read the terms of service, and we've talked about this before, but everybody knows that the Twitter terms of service specifically says you need to put pound sarcasm when you're doing something sarcastic. It's pretty well known. You can do winky face, too. Winky you can face. do a winky face? Yeah. face. That, that's the actually... I use the tongue, the P. See the, yeah, the, that looks dirty. You know what? I would play the whole video, but you can go see it at 1938 Media. <laughs> Lauren Feldman is a genius. He's a comedic genius, I, I believe. I believe Lauren Feldman will be on regular TV within the year. Uh, he's hysterical with the puppets. Uh, one of the funniest guys in our industry. And I give him a lot of credit for actually... I mean, he did a video before this, which was him screaming, uh, which is pretty funny, but I don't think I can play it because it's got so many profanities. Let me uh, introduce uh, my guest, uh, Stephen White. White's right. Stephen White is here, and he is the director of Bing, product evangelist, whatever. He's the guy who mans also. I think you man the Bing Twitter account. Uh, I'm one of the people on the team. One of the people that. who yeah. does that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm now SW. you work at Microsoft, the mothership, on a product that doesn't suck. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think that's the way we have to say it. I mean, people are shocked at Bing being a great product. I'm not saying because you guys are sponsor. I said this long before you were sponsor. Bing has been amazing. And Microsoft had a tough go of it with mm -hmm. some products. Everybody knows Office got a little bloated. Vista was a little bit of a disaster. Windows 7, however, made you have a record quarter. So you recovered from the operating system disaster. Then you have the wireless, which is a complete utter disaster. But we'll leave that off the table. Then you have a string of success. Boom, Xbox is brilliant, brilliant product, looks like Apple or you know, whatever made it. It's, like, it, it's so beautiful. Then yeah. the Zune is gorgeous. I have the Zune too, gorgeous product. And then Bing comes along. Win, win, win. Three big wins. And Windows 7, Bill says win. Um, is, is this like a renaissance going on at Microsoft? How do you explain the fact that now they, they're actually able to compete and make great products in search? or in MP3s because people don't understand. They're expecting Microsoft product, let's face it. They're expecting it to be a big, bloated Microsoft Word, too many features, and now all of a sudden, Bing is tight. And people are saying, oh, the image search on Bing is better than Google. The maps are as good, and this feature I like better. I like this feature in Google better. I like this feature in Bing better. And then I get an email from a friend in Brooklyn who's coming out here, and he says, oh, I was checking Faircaster at Bing, and they said I should wait before buying the ticket. And then somebody, and then he sends me a Bing map. <laughs> and I'm like, it's wait awesome. a second. When, somebody, when one of your friends, yeah. you know, like a normal you know, yeah, civilian, yeah. Yeah. so I sending you Bing, like something is going on. Uh, how did this occur? I don't want to get into the whole interview too early, but I just got to find out how did Bing turn out so well in your estimation? Wow. And, not, and it's not a disaster. I mean, I, I honestly yeah. thought it would be a disaster. Well, I'm glad to see we've uh, got a good reputation down here uh, in, the, in the lovely San Monica area. But I think, you know, <laughs> what's, uh, what, when I joined up the team, I've been at Microsoft about 13 years now, so I've seen right. a lot of the products that have kind of, you know, that have done Live really well. Search. Well, yes. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was one of them that did really well. Uh, yeah. But uh, what happened, when you, when you are in the, in the muck, like when yeah. you are the third guy in a two-horse race, like waving at the horse in front of you, yeah. you know, it's kind of like you, you, you can't just, what we didn't do is just say, how do we copy or how do we, you know, do something similar to Google? Because frankly, right. no one needs that. Like people, right. people told us, I don't want just another search engine. I'm happy enough with the one I have. Thanks right. for trying, right? So when we started thinking about Bing, it was like, you, you can't just build another search engine because people don't need it. Right. You have to build something which is different enough to actually be good enough to use for core regular UPS searches or FedEx right. searches, whatever you want to do, right? But it's got to have enough stuff on top right. uh, to actually make it so uh, it, 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 uh, it really fills a need that hasn't been filled today right. uh, with traditional search engines. Right. So that's, that's what I mean. It so basically you went for it. It, w it, w yeah. it was not a conservative approach. Nobody no. said, like, let's try the everyday thing. And frankly, it's not like you had anything to lose. No, that's right. Whereas Yahoo has a lot to lose, right? Their, their search revenue is a big piece of what they're doing. They make a mistake. It, it tanks revenue. No matter what you did in search, it's not going to have any impact on the revenue because Windows is such a juggernaut with a billion desktops. You're going to make money no matter what you do. Well, Office is a juggernaut. You're yeah. going to make money no matter what you do. You can actually 
you have a, a huge advantage over Google. If Google does anything too risky with search, their revenues could crater. You guys can go crazy. Well, you actually had a really interesting point because when you do have you know under ten percent share like we had when we launched this thing, uh, you're right. It was it, we we had a, a lot of flexibility to try different things without having to worry necessarily about is it the exact right thing. And look, this is a fickle business. People are very accustomed to how they they want to use a search engine, and, and so there is a lot of risk for anyone to actually dramatically change the user interface for search. But to your point, it was kind of like look, you either do this, yeah, or we you know go home. Right. right? And if you go from ten to eight percent, who cares? Yeah. Better to risk going from you know yeah. 8 to 12 right. or whatever you guys have done. Exactly. Um, yep. You've seen the show before. I have. Uh, we have S. Jason starting up in a second, but All I right. want to take a moment to thank DNA Mail, DNA Mail. Everybody loves DNA Mail. If you're using Hosted Exchange, you can go through building out your IT infrastructure, putting up the servers, or you can hire one of Microsoft's partners, DNA Mail. Uh, Microsoft loves DNA Mail. They do a great job. 295, boom, you put it up, 24-hour support. 99.99999999% uptime approximately. You get a free trial. They've been supporters of the show since before the show even started. And you really, if you're a startup company, don't want to be screwing around with putting up servers, IT stuff. You want to focus. You don't want to be screwing around with accounting. You don't want to be screwing around with your legal stuff. You don't hire a lawyer. You don't hire an accountant to work in house. You get that stuff out, out of house. You know, you, get, you focus on your product. Same thing with IT. You should just outsource it to DNA Mail, and they do a wonderful job. Uh, and they're big sponsors of the show. And um, we really appreciate that. Let's go to Ask Jason and take our caller. Dwayne. Yes, how are you doing? Call in from the 623. Where are you calling from? Uh, actually, it's from Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. I will be in Arizona in a couple of months for the Top Secret CEO Conference by that oh, big investment you. bank that nobody's allowed to say the name of. And there's no website <laughs> for. Anyway, uh, I love going to Phoenix. Great, great place. Um, and uh, you've been listening to the show for a while, or is this uh, you're new to the show? Well, I've been listening for a while. Actually, I was listening when you were talking about it with Leo that you were going to be starting this up. So oh, wow. Right so you're a beginning. This Week in Tech fan. Oh, yeah. And you came over to This Week in Startups. Uh, you bet I did. That's awesome. That's why I always thank Leo. He really uh, put me out there to a large audience and uh, always very supportive of his show, which you can go see at uh, twitlive.tv. And he did killer, killer coverage of the tablet, probably the best coverage. He had over 175,000 concurrent users at one point across wow, five wow. different services. By the way, MSNBC, I think, had 60,000 at that point in time. Wow. I mean, basically, Leo <laughs> Laporte is his own cable channel now. It, it, it's pretty clear that Leo is going to get it to a quarter million, half million concurrent users in the next year or two. If he can get to a quarter million or half million users, he's, he's one of the top cable channels. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. The media is imploding. Do you have a favorite uh, guest from, from the show, Dwayne? Have you, ha you have a favorite that you liked? Uh, you know, I think all the guests have been equally uh, informative, and uh, I couldn't say that there was a favorite hmm. because I think um, they all had the right uh, attitudes and everything and, and gave us the information that we were looking for. Okay, so you're going to take the diplomatic approach. I like it. Uh, I would have rather you said I, I would have loved Andy Duke or like this person, but okay, I'm going to let you go on well, that. No, no, it's it's. I mean, there are a few that probably stand out more, but I, I think the ones that you have been picking have been um, exactly the kind of people that us as the audience is looking to for and listen to because of what they've done and what they've achieved and yeah. the steps they've taken. Uh, it's really great that we've been able to get amazing guests, and we really, to be honest, haven't had to try too hard. We've been just we ask people. They watch the show. They enjoy it. They come down to LA to do it. And uh, you know, if we if we do some shows out of San Francisco and New York and Seattle, we'll probably be even able to get better guests. I'm sure we could get Steve Bomber at some point if he was available at the product launch or something like that. If we were able to get to their town and make it easy for them. Um, but you called with a question. Uh, let's hear your question. Uh, well, my question is: is we run a nice little website here. It's called Modders-Inc.com, and what we do is we do customization for. Uh, computers as a hobby, and we also maybe, you know, do some for some companies and whatnot, but um, we seem to be kind of flat. We'll have little spikes here and there, but we always go back to the same old levels of, of visitors, and I'm trying to figure out, maybe there's something I'm not hitting right or doing correctly 
to, to increase it like on a, on a monthly basis. Right. Because it will have spikes, but then we'll flatten back right back out to the same numbers we had before and big spikes. And, and we've done a lot of things with a lot of big companies. We've done things with NVIDIA, two projects with NVIDIA and uh, Cooler Master, Thermal Take, yep. Razor. I mean, the list goes on. Okay, so traffic's uh, flat. How long has the site been around? We are going on to our fourth year, and okay. really, we're this is within the last two years. We've really been trying to push it. It started off as like a hobby site, and now it's becoming uh, more of a business site for us on the on our back end of it. Right, and it's modders. So these are people who modify their computers and make them better. These are hobbyists, uh, sort of like I guess PC Magazine or Ziv had Extreme something mm -hmm. extreme, yeah. Well, extreme yeah. gaming i think for a while or extreme or pc or, or PC. i don't know Ma what it was maximum pc maximum pc yeah. it, it, this is a very uh this is like five percent of people own pcs like to go crazy uh doing it now there are three types of traffic you can get to your site uh there's uh direct traffic people type in your domain name uh there is um referral traffic people linking to your site and then of course there's search traffic uh how does that break down for your site currently percentage wise um, Actually, it, it seems to be pretty pretty good. Uh, Search-wise, we probably get about 50 to 60 percent um, search from Google. Um, direct, we're probably getting about 20 percent. And then link-wise, uh, probably 20, 30 percent. And the other is just kind of other, wherever it comes from. <laughs> right. But uh, we've, we've tried to do the optimizations the best that I could do. And yeah. um, we seem to be good. And I could, we, we maintain a really good level, but we just can't get... To and keep a steady increase. Right, uh, and what is the what is the, the the monthly uniques? What is the daily uniques on the site? Uh, the monthly uniques we're getting anywhere between uh, twenty six to thirty thousand. Okay, so um, the site has room to grow. Um, yes, and uh, the good news is uh, that your site is a couple years old which means your page rank will be good. Your page rank for your homepage is five. That's pretty good. Yes. Uh, you, it could be better. Uh, six would be better, obviously. Seven would be better. That, but that six or seven is probably as high as this is going to go. Uh, there is this concept of a natural audience that you can reach your natural audience. You have not reached it yet. I think there's a lot more people who would come to this. And I'm looking at your Quantcast uh, ranking right now. And uh, that's good that you have Quantcast on it. I'm sure you have Google Analytics maybe or Chartbeat. Yes. Have you tried Chartbeat yet? On your site? No, I have, Char I have not. Chartbeat's an interesting company that I'm an advisor to, and hopefully I can angel invest in uh, out of New York. Brand new company. We use it at Mahalo. And what it does is, just like a tracking pixel in Google Analytics, it will show you what's going on in real time with your site. So you know when you look at Google Analytics or Site Meter, it's an hour old or two hours old, and you don't know what's going on right now? Chartbeat tells you what's going on right now, what pages are spiking and from what traffic sources. Wow. Um, now, the thing that you're going to need to do is you, you're going to need to do a little bit of everything. You're going to want to work on your SEO. You're going to want to work on your original content and referrers. So how many writers do you have contributing to the site? Uh, including myself, we have a, uh, about four people. Four people. And how many posts do you do per day? Well, we do a little nose poop uh, posting, and we do have the forums. Uh, but basically, it ends up being just like our product reviews. Right. And that could be one or two a week. Yeah. So uh, you're doing a small amount of content. Uh, per week, you are doing maybe 20 items per month, plus whatever's going on in the forums. Right. That will make you into a small site. You need to do many more posts, you need to do higher quality posts, and you need to get more inbound links. Those are the things that will move you from where you are now to the next level. You don't have enough posts and enough uh, refreshing content to draw people to come back every day. People are going to come back once a week, once every two weeks, and that's not enough content to make them want to come back every day. So if you're really going to do this, there has to be five posts per day. Uh, and there has to also be uh, perhaps some social media strategy. So what are stories that you can do that I will want to retweet? So this is the way you can think about this is, is would you vote for it on Dig? Would it make the Dig homepage? Would you retweet it? Would you post it to your blog? Outrageous okay. stuff, interesting stuff, lists. The way magazine editors used to look at the, ho the cover of a magazine and they'd say, oh, what should we put, what headline? 27 ways to lose weight, 15 ways to get your guy to love you more and be real romantic, whatever. In the PC case, right. it would be, you know, video card shootouts, maximum amount of storage, 20 terabyte drives, when are they coming, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, it could be funny stuff like watch this guy cook an egg on his processor, uh, you know, right. and make a video, uh, setting a 
set a processor on fire. So those kind of gimmicky things, we did them at Engadget because they were funny and people loved them. So you need to have things that people will link to and say, oh my God, isn't that amazing and outrageous. Uh, Stefan, what do you think? Well, the other thing I would say too is is there's quantity, obviously, but there's right. also you know I, I think about like DP review, right? So, and as as a as a modder myself, as a guy who buys those thermal take you know uh, uh, fans, I want somebody oh. who can give me all the details about that product. So I think think of DP review. They got like nine or ten pages yeah. on, on on a lens or on a camera. Yeah. So, and when I when I think to myself, I want to go do X or I right. with photography, that's where I go. Right. Right. And same thing right. here. If, if if you guys can make yourself kind of the definitive place for uh, for modders to go get the in-depth stuff, not just the crappy SEO stuff that you see, you know, that, that's been recast across the web. I think that could also be a, bit, a big help because there's not there's not a lot of great sites out there competitively that have a ton of this in-depth review for this this stuff. And frankly, you know as well as I do, this stuff's expensive. Like if, if you fry your prop because you got the wrong fan, that's a really pricey proposition. So yeah. I think going deep oh, would be good oh, too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because what we, one of the things we have, we have been talking about was like. Okay, we're a modding site, so basically you mod your cases and really become maybe the the case modding site for for cases. I mean, really go into depth. I mean, we do the product reviews now, and uh, the way we do our product reviews is we don't slam them out. It doesn't come in the door on Monday and the review is out on Friday. We take the product. That I ask my guys take them, shoot some of the mouse, remove the current mouse you have, use this product for you know two or three weeks. Because you know, as I do, like in the first couple of days, oh, I love it. Yep. And then with a week, you say, this thing uh, really sucks. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we give real user reviews. I mean, that's that's one of our things we do. With you that. should try to act as also a feeder to the bigger blogs, yeah. maybe in 2010. So there's already Engadget out there, in Gizmodo, and you know all these other places that are large tech sites. They're not going to at that site do an obsessive compulsive. You know, here is my my impression of this mouse after a hundred hours, uh, and this mouse after a hundred hours, whatever it is, uh, and right. and here's how to mod your case, uh, you know, and do this cooling thing for under X amount of dollars, yeah, whatever it good. is, uh, and uh, they will if you offered them, hey, would you want do you want to rerun this piece? All we want back is a link, and maybe you know at the end, you know, uh, that we have other things. That could be a great link building strategy. And this is what the search engine optimizers yeah. call a link building strategy. So you could say, hey, listen, we're going to be doing one of these, you know, we call it a burn in review and whatever. And we just want to get some exposure for our site. They'll probably be more than happy to take it. Uh, and you, you only have to get one or two to say yes to make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So building links, building more content, maybe building some fun, outrageous, crazy content. Uh, what Seth Godin calls the purple cow. Uh, what other people might call something unique, memorable, retweetable, um, work backwards from that. What would be okay. the sickest, craziest, you know, uh, case mod you could do? What, what, take some meme that's in people's thinking right now in relation to something in pop culture and then attach it to what you do with case modding. So if uh, Avatar is out, is somebody going to do an Avatar related case? Boom, and somebody does that, Perfect. and you put it up there with 20 pictures. Of course, you're going to get you know some links, and put it up on Dig, put it up on Reddit. Even if you don't make the front page, if you get inbound links from those 10 services, and your four people vote it up and post comments on them, it's going to create a little inbound link juice, uh, which is always good. And then, of course, you get the retweeting effect. So uh, you have a you have a lot of work to do, uh, but follow the big blogs and see what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the lessons are there in Engadget or Hackaday. Uh, and these blogs that we started at Weblogs Inc. Um, and it's going to be a lot of blocking and tackling. There's no, it, if it was easy, everybody would have the number one blog. It takes oh, years absolutely. and resources. And so I think you're going to have to do more investment, and then you're going to have to find advertisers to fund that investment. It, it's a grind. Publishing is hard. It is not an easy business. You don't just get the traffic. Uh, but if you look at like Cracked as an example, those guys have just a social media uh, focus. Mashable is the, ma they're the masters at social media optimization mm -hmm. at Mashable. All they do is think, what headline is going to get retweeted the most? You know, Apple tablet sucks. App there's 18 reasons why I'm not getting an Apple tablet. The 17 reasons people don't get about why the Apple tablet is great. You know, uh, they, they had one on there, eight, ap eight, Apple, eight tablets that are better than the iPad. You know, like, that's the story that I want to read. That's the story I was just thinking of, like, if, what, aren't there better products than this already in the market? Boom. They anticipated that and got it out before anybody else. So that anticipation of what the market wants is good. So start thinking about what do the case modders want. If they really want to know about Drobo or Raid Arrays, 
What's the sickest RAID array that could be built? E going in either direction. What's mm -hmm. the largest? What's the smallest? What's the most uh, non-logical one? If somebody takes a bunch of SD drives and puts them into a RAID, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? But somebody did it. That's cool. What if somebody took those little tiny drives? What if somebody took you know, five compact flash readers and made, uh, and made a RAID array with them? It's stupid, but it's interesting. Like if somebody right. made a RAID array, has somebody done that, by the way? Made a RAID array out of like compact flash cards? That would be interesting to me. I would read it. I don't know why I'd read it, but it'd be interesting. It'd be good pictures. Uh, and right. that's what Hackaday and Engadget were based on, yeah. was those kind of weirdly obsessive things. I think it's right. Just, it's, it's, be careful, because you're going against the big guys, right? And you've got a four-person staff, right? right. And, and my assumption is you're not, this isn't your full-time job all the time. So sometimes, you, if, if they're going to zig, you want to zag. And that's why I'm thinking maybe the alternative, too, is rather than to go for quantity and just kind of competing with these, these yeah. sites, is really just, like, as Jason said, you know, pick a few things, go super deep, and make yourselves the, the canonical for, you know, case modders who, who want to create a, a knobby uh, case, which yeah. I think I might do this weekend, actually, yeah. along with my CF RAID controller. I think we just um, yeah. we just filled Stefan's yeah. weekend. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm going <laughs> to fries after this. I've had no fries. <laughs> but now you know what you can do with all those card readers. You have 18 yeah. card readers and 72 <laughs> cards you don't use. Make a RAID array, and then hook your iTablet up to it. I mean, that's the biggest fraud. This is why Steve Jobs is a bit of a fraud. Uh, he makes the iTablet. And there's no no, SD or no. compact flash drive. I wonder why that is. No USB port to put in your flash reader, compact flash. I wonder why. Could it be that you want us to download stuff from iTunes as opposed to moving it from the legal copy we've bought and putting it in there? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, they they, they hmm. sell a dongle. Mm. They sell, yeah, I know. There's a $38 dongle yeah. to put a compact. It's you could have put a USB reader yeah. in like every other that was kind of silly, yeah. vice yeah. in the world. It's unbelievable what he does and he gets away with. The, the, the reality distortion field of Steve Jobs is so great. I've got a USB port on my refrigerator. And I will like, what? Name a consumer electronic device that doesn't <laughs> have a co USB Absol port my on toaster. it. Yeah. I, I got the new Braun uh, toothbrush, yeah. USB device. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I have to change the background on the uh, display. Yeah, on the display. Right. Yeah. I like to put my daughter picture right on yellow. there. When I do my face. But, I mean, everything's got a USB yeah, device. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are hot coffee. That's right, uh, the warmers. The warmers yeah. are USB powered. Yeah, five volts. Steve maybe. Jobs can't put a USB thing in there. Let me, I have another tirade I need to go on for a second. Uh, Dwayne, do you mind if I could just hijack the conversation for one second? Go ahead. Okay. All yours, man. This is a message to publishers. And if a super fan could cut this starting now, it would be appreciated. Well, after I say it's appreciated. Now. If you are a publisher of a newspaper, magazine, or book, and you sell your products through the App Store, you are a fool. You are an idiot, and you are going to give your entire circulation to Mr. Steve Jobs. Let me explain to you why what you're about to do is destroy your entire business. As a newspaper, as a magazine, your business is predicated on having a relationship with a reader. That reader gives you their credit card number, their address, and their name, and their email address. And then you have a circulation department on the 32nd floor who sits there and obsesses about it. When somebody buys something through the App Store, you get nothing. Ungats, zero, zip, zilch, no phone number. You don't know who your own readers are. You have no relationship. You get a check from Apple that says, F you, you're a fool, here's your $82 minus 32, 30%. Do not be an idiot. Only make your product available through the web browser. If you make the New York Times available through an app and give 30% to Steve Jobs, and you don't know who your reader are, readers are, then author Solzer Slogerberger, Solzberger, Solzberger, Solzberger. So. this is a message to Arthur Schulzberger. <laughs> That's the title of this. And you misspell Schulzberger. Author Schulzberger, you're an idiot if you sell the New York Times through the App Store and give Steve Jobs 30% and don't know who your readers are. Do not buy into the Steve Jobs hype reality distortion machine. You will give away your entire business. The circulation department will have nothing to do. And then you will be beholden to Steve Jobs and his games. And his games include things like what he did to the music industry, which was, oh, you want to sell it only as an album? No. I will destroy the album because I, Steve Jobs, don't believe in it. I also don't believe in USB drives and, and, and other common sense things. Cut and paste. Do not buy into it. What, I mean, Tyler, what do you think? I'm, I'm on fire. This is, what, this is what always happens. Every Friday, 
I get excited about something on the show. I go on a tirade, and you know what's going to happen. Tomorrow I'm going to write this in an editorial. Yeah. Then I'm going to publish it, and it's going to be comm score, and it's, my whole life gets taken over by this goddamn stuff. Yeah. I can't take it anymore. It my wife is going to divorce me <laughs> because all I'm doing yeah. for the three days over the weekend is going... I have, my o I have insane OCD. So my OCD starts going insane. Yeah. I can't do anything functional until I write the story. Yeah. Because it, it, yeah, start, yeah. it starts bothering yeah, me. Yeah. You can see yeah. already I'm physically bothered by yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Like I was Comscore. Now I got to get it out of my system. So I write it and I send it to 19,000 people. Then 1,000 emails come back. Then all the, it, the whole thing blows yeah. up. Comscore CEOs yeah. calling people, asking to have a meeting. There's a whole Comscore settlement going on now that I can't even talk about. There's some settlement going on. It, it's just making me crazy. I, I don't know why I get worked up by it. It's like uh, polar bears and penguins. <laughs> There's a reason that they are on separate parts of the, of, of the, of the planet. You put them together. If, if you had the polar bears with the penguins, it would be chaos. From <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're, they're, you're the polar bear. <laughs> you got to stay up in the Arctic. Leave the penguins. Right, there's like, oh, a, there's like yeah. a hundred thousand penguins just sitting yes. there in a, in a big mass. Yes, you'll go crazy. You'll lose your and mind. And you make you go crazy. I, for some reason, it's making sense. Yeah, I don't know if it's a lack of sleep and then I'm delirious. So, Dwayne, I hope we helped. Yeah, <laughs> it's like polar bears and penguins. You'll figure it out. Uh, everybody who's on the show, everybody who listens to the show, you have a blog. Uh, help them out. Write a nice blog post that you checked out. Moders Dash Inc dot com and you loved it tweet it do the guy a favor we could probably get a hundred inbound links to his site you know right do something nice for a guy and help him out you know and yeah Dwayne hit us at Bing too Let's show us your site so we can see what it looks like and yeah we, you know we have ways yeah the Bing folks might be able to help maybe they'll wow. feature you on MSN mm -hmm. that would send 50,000 people in one day hey I'm all for that a little bit of a content it's partnership see we're making deals happen <laughs> all right Dwayne good luck with it all right thank you good that was a good question that was a good question Good question. Thank you to Ustream for sponsoring the show. You guys have been great from the beginning. Ustream's doing a good job. They actually stayed up and running. And I think there's a new feature on Ustream. You were telling me this. Is that public knowledge, that feature that you were telling me about? It's about to be. It's about to be. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Tyler was telling me that Ustream is getting... <laughs> Before Tyler tells me that I shouldn't say this, I'm going to say it anyway because I like to break news stories. Yes. And you know what's interesting? We had Philip on last week from Blippi. Yeah, yeah. And... He was telling us how Amazon was blocking Blippi, but nobody wrote that story. I'm shocked that it didn't come up on TechCrunch or Mashable that Amazon, the big open proponents of everything, open source and all this stuff, use the, you know, the cloud, and uh, they're blocking Blippi? It doesn't make any sense to me. So now I can't even put Audible on Blippi. They've, they've timed it out because they're, they don't like them authenticating. It's like it's my account. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, no, but, anyway, no, it, it is. It is. I think barely kind of open. They're gonna. Uh, you can charge for a live stream now? Right. I could charge the people watching to watch the show. So uh, if you're enjoying the show this week, all 500 of you, uh, enjoy it, 579 of you, because next week it's going to be a dollar. And I'm going to make $579, <laughs> and then I'm going to give away... That would pay for the, all the next That would pay for the yeah. giveaway. Yeah. Yeah. That would actually be funny. That would be like a gambling thing. Yeah. Everybody, oh, yeah. That's it. Everybody Reverse pays $10 yeah, yeah, yeah. to watch the stream, and then we give one person the $5,790. Dude, I'm loving this. That's got to be illegal. Nah. Is that legal? Yeah. yeah. Bing it. Well, at least somebody's getting bing it. something. Uh, bing it. Is that legal? <laughs> the, the, the California lotteries, uh -huh. which has done amazing for the California school system. Right. I mean, they're just, the school system's making money hand over fist out of this. Haven't you noticed yeah. <laughs> over the 10 years of the California lottery? <laughs> yeah, no, of course. <laughs> like they There's, market it like the kids are getting this yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. Right. How come it never gets to the schools? That, that always say that and then it doesn't. There's, there's some guy teaching his kid at home who's on the board of this thing. Right. You know, having a good laugh out of all this. What a disaster. Anyway, uh, Ustream is going to have pay-per-view, basically. And that'll be cool. Maybe we'll do a pay-per-view show. Maybe I will do like one like how to pitch an angel investor, and we'll charge money for it, and people will pay for it. I don't know. Uh, it's an interesting idea. Uh, but you know what another interesting idea is? Power VPS, Power VPS. Uh, the same guys who brought you DNA mail now have Power VPS. It's virtual hosting. It's cheap. And, of course, they love the Twist audience, and they're giving you guys 25% off. So if you're going to go use Amazon, you should check these guys out because they're giving 25% off, and they're using the show. I want to hear how they're doing. So go check it out and use the discount code TWIST. Uh, they have amazing uh, hosting services and great customer service. 
uh, super low, 59 bucks a month. So if you're gonna do this kind of stuff, this is a good place to do it and they will uh, take good care of you and you tell them Uncle Jason sent you or your cousin Tyler, either one. And of course, WebSpy uh, monitor all kinds of server activity from employee internet access to mail service to web host, analyze traffic levels, patterns, errors, and more, a total log analysis, solution logs, pick up all activity so you can see things going on and uh, keep yourself from getting in trouble or your employees. Because you know, we had that employee, well, there was a, there was a company that had an employee who was downloading BitTorrents. And then that employer got a letter from a movie company that was an investor in his company. I don't, can't say the name of the company, but the investor's company's lawyers are emailing the CEO saying, why are you stealing X huge movie that made over a billion dollars from inside your company? And then CEO had to go to very talented employee and say, very talented employee, WTF, stolen movies that work from the company that is paying your goddamn salary? Are you out of your mind? I would have, I mean, the person would have had to fire this employee, lose a good employee, and we all would have been appointed with WebSpy. Because you would have known that there were bit torrents at work. This is a message to the youth of America. Steal media on your own goddamn time, not at work. You will get fired. <laughs> your boss is watching what you do online. There is a trail. There is one IP address into your company. It is a static IP. One IP from your company to its internet service provider. And when you do dumb One minute, 50 seconds in, we've got our first curse. Please be bled out, right. dumb S-H-I-T. When you do stupid stuff, your boss is going to get a letter from somebody saying your employee is doing stupid stuff. Don't do stupid stuff. Steal your stuff at home. All right, go to Starbucks and use the Wi-Fi there to steal stuff. If, you're gonna, if, you, if you have to steal a movie, which is going to be available anyway in your Netflix account, you can't wait 60 days to watch it on Netflix in demand. You have to steal it in a, on a cam version with the audio track out of sync so it's talking like this. I mean, is that fun watching... Harry Potter when, well, whatever film it was, at whatever imaginary organization the story comes from. <laughs> and if you're a small business owner, or a medium-sized business owner, or a large business owner, WebSpy would avoid this problem. Do you, as a business owner, do you know that you have probably employees right now doing stupid, idiotic stuff? And these are the employees you love, and you don't want to lose, and the cost of losing employees is like $25,000. WebSpy will avoid all of that. If you thank the sponsors, I will thank you. Thank the sponsors, and it's a very simple thing to do. Go on your Twitter right now and say thank you at Bing, thank you at DNA Mail, thank you web, at WebSpy, thank you at PowerVPS, and thank you at Ustream. Great sponsors. Let's do Shark Tank. Everybody loves this feature. The best things in All right, here we go. We have really oh God, such a long intro. It's a, long bumper. it's a big bumper. Hold on, Andrew. I know you're excited. Relax, Andrew. Take it All easy. Right, go. I know you're ready, Andrew. From the 617, which I think is Jersey. What is 617? No, you're so bad at this. I'm Come terrible. On, what is 617? What am I? Where are you from? Boston. Boston. Yeah. You're from Boston. The Without best, the accent. With the Celtics. Congratulations on getting Kevin Garnett back. He looked terrible last night. But it was right, back. How the Knicks? Oh, the Knicks? How Knicks? are the Knicks? How are the Knicks? <laughs> you wait till LeBron James comes <laughs> next year and Chris <laughs> Bosh. <laughs> yeah, that's not the type of button you, you want to push. Oh, sorry, how, you pitch, how, how, how are the Boston Red Sox doing? I, I'm officially <laughs> ruling this pitch as a failure right here. Let me tell you something. <laughs> the, the, this the pitch is not going well. I'm going to rank the pitch right now. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Double rating. What about the Yankees, huh? How about the Yankees? What happened <laughs> no, last year? You got, you got me there. All right. The wheels are falling. Okay, off. there we go. Yeah. Don't. No, congratulations yeah. to the Celtics on winning two years ago. Was it two years ago that you guys won? Yeah. I'm still hungover. Right you won two years ago and never win again. Uh, no, congratulations <laughs> for all your players now being over the hill and dominated by Kobe Bryant and Dwayne Wade. No, uh, I think you guys got a shot this year. I think the Celt I think it's going to be Celtics and. Um, uh, my prediction is Celtics and obviously Kobe, plus four other guys. 
uh, no, it's Kobe's all-star team now versus Kevin Garnett's all-star, all-star team. I mean, it's ridiculous, these two teams. They each have three all-stars on it. I don't know if they all got in. Who got into the, do you know who got into the uh, all-star game? Is it Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen? Is it three I Celtics? I am not. I don't follow it too much anymore. Oh, okay. They're getting old. Okay. So somebody in the chat room, tell us what's going on. Uh, I know Allen Iverson gets into the, <laughs> he hasn't even played this season he's in. Um, okay. So you are calling from Boston where there's 18 feet of snow. Um, and you know what Shark Tank is. You get a chance to pitch. Uh, Bing has put up uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars that they're going to give to you if your pitch is over a six on average. No, I'm just kidding. I have that. it o- outside in the uh, yeah, hallway. We have yeah. it outside in the hallway, like it's a World Series of Poker. I know somebody's <laughs> guy's got a what do they call it? A handcuff the on handcuff their wrist. My, yeah. 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 Uh, Rondo is a reserve. Rondo. Rayshon Rondo is a reserve. Oh, please, wow. Rondo. That guy would be a Rondo on any other team is a is a backup at best. That guy's not a starter. I'm sorry. It's, you stand next to Ray Allen, you're going to get six assists. I, I get three assists watching Ray Allen play. Okay? I'm in the fifth row. I get three assists. Rondo's awesome. I, can't, I, I shouldn't even look at the chat room. It's ridiculous. Uh, okay. So, Andrew, uh, you've been listening to the show for a while? Yeah, I've been listening to since you started and uh, I've seen uh, most, most shows. Great. usually watch the clips on YouTube. Yeah. And my favorite show has got to be number 23. 23. What is 20? That's a that's a vintage. That's when you have show your gun and you're going against the angel. Oh, Koretsu oh. Forum Showdown. That's, that's the best one. Yeah, that was pretty good, I have to say. And you know what's really even better? Is that those poor dumb bastards took the bait. I mean, that was just like... And this is a lesson for all entrepreneurs out there. When somebody who has accomplished nothing in your vertical puts a grenade at your feet, just kick it away. Don't pick up the grenade. Just... Knock it away. It's a grenade. Just knock it away. Pick it up. Throw it into the ditch. That's it. You don't pick up the grenade and go, what's this? Uh, and your head, face gets blown up. That's what Koretsu Forum did. Next week, Boulder, we will be having the first. This is next week. Yeah. I'll be at the Boulder Tech uh, meetup. Yeah. I'm going to speak for a couple minutes with Tyler. Yeah. And uh, next week, we have the Boulder Open Angel Forum. Then we're going to do San Francisco. Then we're going to do Palo Alto. Then we're going to do Seattle. I got some Microsoft guys up in Seattle who want to do it. I got New York. We London. got London. We got Seoul. Lots of Seoul. We're also going to do it in Korea. Um, and uh, this thing's going to become a juggernaut. It's pretty clear, right, Tyler? Hmm? Sold out. Uh, yeah, we sold the five service provider yep. tickets. So the thing's making money. Talk, now we're talking with national sponsors. Yeah, point. and now this is the crazy part. A law firm called and said, may we give you a large check? to sponsor all the cities for the entire year. Jeez. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, I didn't know that. Well, of course we know that's going to happen. But the other guys are like, oh, we're going to charge the startups. Well, you, you know you- what I'm going to charge you for this pitch? <laughs> Nothing. You know why? Because that's evil. That's just, well, you're gonna, yeah. But now. you can only have a sponsor like that wants to do a worldwide sponsorship, a great law firm, if there's really good presenters yes. with really good angels yeah. it has to and have you integrity can't, and you can't yeah. have that integrity if the if the Everyone's presenters are paying right. yeah if you, you if you lack integrity you're not going to get one of the top three law firms in the world uh which everybody knows the name of that has the best some of the best lawyers in the world tech or non-tech say we need to be involved and that's what these idiots at Koretsu forum didn't get is that there is a better way to do it and it, they just people think short term oh the startups are desperate. I should take advantage of them. As opposed to saying, you know what? The law firms are more than happy to pay to get access to potential clients. Mm-hmm. You know what it costs to do an A round in investing? When you in get the, yeah, the fees to the attorneys? Yeah. 30, 40. 30, 40 grand. That's exactly right, Tom. Look at you. Learn stuff. And to do an A round <laughs> is 10 grand. Look at him. He's so experienced now. He's been three years at Mahalo. You know he can tell you everything. He's a genius. He is, actually. All right. So, anyway, if a law firm gets one client, let's say they get one or two clients a year out of this, and all the goodwill they build, it'll be a profitable thing for them. $6,000 for a startup company. Nonsense. Nonsense. 587 people watching. Wow. So, is Koretsu still around? Or did they, Koretsu, did they, get, uh, they closed Boulder. After, after they closed remember. Boulder because they, they knew okay. that there was a new yeah. sheriff in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not only, I mean, this is the great thing. Uh, Integrity and success breeds success. Mm-hmm. It's chapter eight in my book, which isn't written, but yeah. somebody offered me money to write a book. Chapters. 
Uh, do we tell people? Should we tell people that there's another reality TV company that wants to do a show with us? That you, I think you said enough. You there you go. There, yeah. somebody, uh, somebody asked me last night at an event. Reality. Like, yeah. This is crazy. This is the fourth time in two years that a reality TV company has come and said, "Jason, we want to do a show with you about startups." But this is, I think, fourth time might be a charm. I, they, I like these guys because mm -hmm. they're thinking about it in the right way. They're mm -hmm. not thinking like the Shark Tank, Burnett nonsense. Mm -hmm. Like, let's make it so super entertaining mm -hmm. that it's just. Beat up on some. I don't mm -hmm. want to do like beat mm -hmm. up on some dumbass. I mean, I do that with Karetsu for him. Mm -hmm. I don't need to right. do that again. You got plenty of targets. I got plenty of targets. I can beat up on the dumbasses at. Is that does that is dumbass count against your iTunes? I think dumbass is fine, right? iTunes dumbass is okay, right? Anyway, if I want to beat somebody up, there's Comscore, Karetsu Forum, Mike Scam Segal. I mean, the list goes on and on. I, I can beat Steve Jobs. I can make fun of a successful person who doesn't put a USB port on a device. I mean, can somebody make a website that says, I will not buy a tablet. I will not buy the iPad without a USB port.com. Somebody in the audience make a posterous blog. It will cost you eight bucks. I'm not an investor in posterous, but I would if I could. I love that product. I won't buy uh, an yeah. iPad without a USB port dot com and then we could all post comments on it and just make fun of Steve Jobs forever <laughs> and then just the whole campaign should be no no USB no that's a better domain name no, no USB, USB no, no iPad. iPad that could be an entire movement right there I mean is anybody else just extraordinarily pissed off that the outrageousness of releasing a device without a USB port it's just un and also, I'll be not to kiss Microsoft's ass that they're here, but didn't Bill Gates make like 18 tablets that have better specs than this one? I mean, I know this one probably is the sexiest thing ever. Microsoft doesn't make the hardware and software; they make the software. But I saw the Dell on on um, oh the Mini Five or the, the Mini Five. Yeah. Can we pull up that video from TechCrunch on YouTube? I'll play yeah. it uh, later. Uh, but on um, TechCrunch, Mike Arrington's at the Davos, which I'm not at. Now we're here in we're Santa here. Monica. Uh, and Davos looks totally dope. They're all walking around like in this, <laughs> like Swiss I chalet saw furs. or something. I saw furs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. With furs. And and it's snowing yeah. and these. It's like some James Bond thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and yeah. so Mike Arrington runs into Michael Dell, and Michael Dell's like, "Hey, Mike, what do you think nice. of this?" And he shows him a video of a device that is what the iPad should be, which is a Dell computer running. Uh, is it running Chrome? Didn't know. Or Android. It's Android. It's Android. Android, and it's like here is a full featured. Computer with a USB port that's this big that fits in your pocket, and, and you can a, read a book and on. And the camera, I thought. And I think it has a camera. Yeah. Yeah, I think he showed the back with yeah. a camera. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. I know, man. I'm with you. I, I, and I know, you know what Steve Jobs is doing. He's going to release. After ten years, he is going to release. Not ten years. In two years, he'll finally put a camera and a USB on it. But enough of this. Well, it's either that or he seems to be regressing. Every new device has one less thing on it. Less and less features. And yeah. I, I, had a, I had a meeting with Carl The Swisher. next one has no it's power actually. button. <laughs> you know, Here's power. my theory. Yeah. And I said this on This Week in Tech. And I, I, was, I had Kara Swisher over the house today. There's a little name drop right there. Oh, that's good. We should do actually be a good sound effect for a name drop. <laughs> 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 little name drop. Uh, Kara Swisher was over. And she said, oh, what do you think? And I said, what I think is Steve Jobs is trying to lock down the desktop. So he started with the iPhone, that, or the iPod, locked up. You can't put any of your own software on it. Then he said, oh, here's the iPhone, which is as much of a computer as it is a phone, 50-50. Let's lock that device down. You can only run the software that I approve. Duh. I mean, when's the last time anybody bought into an operating system that you had to get approval from daddy to run an application? Then he says, OK, now that I've got you schmucks on the um, iPhone platform, I am going to make it bigger into a tablet computer, and now I've locked down what is essentially your desktop. He's pitching this as a computer, and if you guys buy it, you're buying a computer where the only software you can run is the stuff he approves. That is like communism. Yeah. It is the they worst. Don't, they don't make these in North Korea? I think it is actually made in North Korea. I think actually Kim Jong-il was beta testing, because I was talking to Kim Jong-il on Skype, yeah. and he was telling me. Yeah. Well, he wanted to know what's going to... We were talking about Lost. 
the last season no. Lost because he's yeah. really into Lost. I, I heard that. You like, Kim you had Evangeline Neal. at the house last week. Evangeline Lily. No, yeah, from exactly. Yang, <laughs> we out. should actually, that would be a really great bit on the show <laughs> is if we Skyped in Kim Jong-il. If there's somebody out there who looks, whose dad looks like Kim Jong-il, if like there's a oh, Korean person God. out there whose dad looks Preferably. like Kim Jong-il, if we could do a Kim Jong-il call like in. call in every yeah. week, it would be hysterical. What if he's on Shark Tank judging? Yeah, that'd be great. He'd be the Kim Jong-il judge. Be... Okay, anyway, <laughs> we've gone on a complete tangent. We've got a guy to pitch, don't we? We still have a guy who wants to pitch. Andrew, are you still there or have you given up on the show? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you know the rules. You have 60 seconds, and uh, you're going to pitch us. I'm going to ask everybody who's in the chat room on Ustream. You go to Ustream.tv, uh, and you'll see uh, the This Week in Startups on the homepage. There you click on it, you go to the chat room, or you can go to ThisWeekInStartups.com. Or you can, uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, I don't want you to rate the pitch before he pitches uh, websites <laughs> in the chat room. <laughs> very funny. A little quick on the drive. Yeah, a little quick there. I, mean, I think he put his things in there so he could be first. There is no first in this game. Uh, I want you in the chat room to judge two things on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, the pitch and the, the product itself, whatever the idea is. So that's a one to ten. How did he do on a pitch? How did he do on a product basis? And uh, Jorkos uh, correctly gives him a nine for patience. Uh, Andrew uh, from the six one seven Boston, uh, you have thirty. You have uh, sixty seconds, starting in three, two, go. Maroondoor.com is a create your own private social network platform like Ning for homeowners who live within homeowner associations. The undemocratic nature of homeowner associations limits the rights and voices of homeowners. Lack of communication is directly related to poor decision making and management. A poorly run association diminishes property values and hurts neighbor relations. Maroon Door is all about bringing pre-existing real life social networks online. That's it. Wow, okay, very good. The quality of pitches is going up. The idea quality is going up. I would like everybody in the chat room, I guess I just maybe, gave a hint at my rating, uh, but uh, I see a pitch of an 8 uh, from Bowler Jim. I see uh, Mashu uh, gives it an 8 pitch, idea 9. Wow. Eric gives it a pitch of 8. This is the highest scores I think we've ever had. I see uh, eight, 8 and 8. I see idea 9 from Eric. Uh, I see a 7.5. I see an 8. Idea 5.5. Somebody didn't like it, but that's one of very few. 8 on the idea, 9 on the pitch, 8, 9, 6, 9, 8, 7, 7, 7. Nine six six nine eight 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 seven nine nine eight. High scores. Every, these are very high scores. Uh, I think you nailed it. Uh, let me let Stefan give his uh, thoughts. You own a home? Uh, I do. Well, you're I a Microsoft do. employee for 13 years. Yeah, you I, probably I, own like an what is it, 15,000 square feet? You oh, own actually, a condo though. <laughs> I actually own a small island. I used to own a condo. No, I used to own a condo, and and the homeowners thing actually you've nailed it. But I'm gonna be a little contrarian here. I'm gonna go a little against the grain. Uh, well, give a score. Uh, we would like to give scores. You want pitch or you want an idea? Yes. Both? Yeah, yes. yes, exactly. Okay, so on your pitch, uh, on your idea, I'm going to give you a nine. On your pitch, I'm going to give you a five. And here's why. Right. Here's, okay. And here's why. It depends on the audience to whom you're pitching. So if you're pitching out yeah. to uh, a seed or an angel guy, you, you, you came in almost, almost like taken to the man, right? You're almost very negative. You come out, and, and so you, you've led with all the negative points of, mm. uh, of the product, mm. right? I, I think I might have started with, started with something a little bit different, which is actually, you know, what are the benefits that people who join this network within their communities are going to achieve? Are they going to know when, you know, things are happening, when someone's on vacation, to get their mail, pick up their packages? I don't know what these things are, but it's been a while since I've been in the condo. But, yeah, I, so I think I might, I might actually, rather than, than say everything sucks and here's how we're going to fix it, which is one approach to take for a, you know, for a pitch, problem solving and here's a solution. I might actually look for kind of the, the unmet needs of the people, uh, how they can make you know, their, their so lives a, a more, better. A more positive spin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maroon, uh, uh, Maroon Door is up and running at M-A-R-O-O-N, Maroon the color, Door, D-O-O-R. I, I didn't like the name at first, but I'm kind of I kind of like it. I thought it was Ruin Door. It's Maroon. Well, door. no, I like Maroon Door because okay. Maroon is a very interesting color. It it's is memorable, color. and yeah. Door connotes home. Yep, I like so that. So it's unique. Uh, it's a little bit long, but it's unique. And so I I, I don't think I'm ever going to for, forget Maroon no, Door. I'm going to give you on your pitch. It was short, sweet, to the point, and got me engaged. So I'm going to give it an eight or nine. I think that I agree that I didn't get the full like what's possible. I, I would have said at the end if I was doing the pitch, you know, like. Let's say I give it an eight. What would make it a ten is uh, sort of my obligation, my geary to you is to tell you how I make a ten. Is I th I think Stefan's right. If you said at the end, and the th there's three main things we think people are going to get out of this that they can't possibly get out of the current thing, which is an independent voice, independent voting, and the ability 
to uh, self-organize when they're not allowed to do it through the regular organization for things like holiday parties, which shouldn't really be part of the homeowners association, right. whatever. And so it's like that would have been the icing on the cake is the opportunity. So it's like we yep. solved this pain point yep. and here's the opportunity. So yep. I don't agree that it's a five. I give it an eight. Yeah, but know. everybody has their right to disagree. I'm a little low now. Yeah, Maybe you're a little low. But you're keeping right. him hungry because he might think he get a big head right now after all those scores. That's true. Uh, Good idea. I love the idea. Yeah. Tyler, what are your thoughts? Love the idea. Love the idea. Love the idea. And I, I, I give him a bonus point for his brevity. But it, <laughs> Always a bonus point. <laughs> if you get it point. done in 45 seconds and you did it in about 35, I think, whenever I saw uh, and I really would be great to have a stopwatch when we do this, yeah. so we actually can get the exact number of seconds. Um, is uh, yeah, you always get a little bit yeah. of a bonus. Uh, if all, th all three of us sitting here. The second he stopped, we went. Yeah. Yeah. It was oh, because yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. you had us. Yeah. Far better to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave them wanting more. Yeah. The second, at some point in the 60 seconds, if you go over 40, whatever, at some point people will be like, I got it. Go ahead and end it. Yeah. In their minds, they're not going to tell you verbally. Well, some people will. Wonderful insight. Right. You don't want people. This is no, but it is. I'm going to give. This is one of the few times that we've played insights from Tyler that it actually was valid. Somebody should actually. Somebody should make like a compilation tape of all the insights from Tyler, just with a remix and That's some a techno idea. beat. Yeah. But uh, it really is a good point. You don't want their mind to wander. Yeah. Once you've got them captured, end it. Yeah. It's just like, you know, when you meet a beautiful girl, like I, you know, when I was single and Right. Meet a beautiful girl, and you have this interaction with her, and it's like, oh my god, this girl is amazing. And then you're like, hey, you want to go to the next place with us? And she's like, I can't, I gotta go. Uh, here's my number. Boom, they're out. And you're just like, you can't stop thinking about her. I'm talking about back when I was in college or whatever, and I was running around New York City at Bungalow Eight like a maniac. You know, it's like that's the girl you remember. You know, when I met Jade, my wife, like she was leaving the party, and I was like, oh, what are you doing tomorrow night? And she was like, I had plans, but you know, I was like, oh, can I have your number? She, yeah, and you know, it's like. You, you leave them wanting more. You leave them going, oh my God, what was that? That was just so engaging. Yeah. And I think you did that. Um, now, uh, what can you work on? Uh, I'm going to your site right now, and the uh, site looks like it was built in 1999. And well, it's a prototype. I, it's a prototype. Okay, good. So fine. Uh, it's a prototype. Um, there's a lot, lot you, if, once you get into it, is everything you know you see more right but yeah it's just a prototype okay and is it is are you actually using it for a client i see you got forums here which is well nice. the thing is i built it uh, here's the backstory i built it because i had a serious problem with my condo association everything was a mess ah. and nothing was getting done and yep. so i built a small site and everything started coming together and i also own a real estate company and i figured out i could you know kind of network my way in to mm. people's lives and get referrals through it. Right. So it has like two purposes. Yeah. So it changed my association because everybody had a voice and we discussed things and got things sorted out and uh, I was also able to get business from it. So there's you know, two dimensions just, to it. I, I will say something really quick. That so, you, you couldn't put that in your pitch necessarily but that's a good kind of longer pitch is, is that personal insight that you had just then. That, that hooked me too because now I'm like oh god you have a personal interest in this always, and, and it's yeah. now I'm really engaged in that. So that's, that was great. Yeah, and I think this can yeah, well, become... That's why I'm calling in. You yeah. know, I want to get it concise. Yep. I think that you uh, have a chance to build something pretty cool on an SEO basis as well here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking right now at the site. You have Kelton Place Condominiums, um, which has been viewed 11,634 mm -hmm. times. I'm guaranteeing 11,632 of those came from Google. You are ranked uh, number 19 for mm -hmm. the name of this uh, place although you are naming the headers of your page incorrectly. You have the title of your page as the title of your website, not the name of the condominium. Yeah, that's probably so in your yeah, Google well, ranking, when you I do a you. search for Kelton Place Condominiums, this is SEO 101, yeah. your title is Maroon Door Real Estate Social Network Professionals. Mm -hmm. If you had put the title of your page as Kelton Place Condominiums, join now with a call to action, you would go up probably into the top 10. If you get people right. doing this and self-organizing, it's like the, I would call this the meetup.com of condo associations. Mm, that's good. Other people must have tried this. There must be competitors out there. Are there? No, not really. I mean, there are people that go on Facebook and create a little uh, okay. of their association. Should people self-organize? Yeah. So I just thought to bring it under one roof and have, you know, hmm. a niche. Uh, I think you've got a great market opportunity. Yeah. And so market opportunity. Problem. It is. How does it make money? And so, like, if you look at a listing online, if you go, you know, searching for a home and you want to see a condo listing, you know, maybe 
I could integrate the uh, Maroon Door into those listings so people could, you know, kind of check up on the association site. And they can't see much, but, you know, they can get an idea of what's going on. Um, okay. Uh, it's a great pitch. You built this company yourself. You own 100% of it, correct? Yes. Um, I Looking for an investor, so okay. would you like to be in? Uh, I, I, I'll, I'm going to be honest. I need to know more about you and yeah. what you're capable okay. of. You know, my always my concern is, you know, you're not an internet native. I tend to angel invest in people. Well, I, I actually have technical skills as well. Okay, uh, that's good. So, so what I would okay. say is Tyler does vetting for me, right? So you never want to try to get to Mark Cuban or Kevin Rose. You want to get to right. the, the person who stands next to him. So Tyler at Mahalo.com, good person to sort of send it into and say, hey, you know, I was on the show, whatever. When's the next OA, OAF LA? You know, apply to the one in San Francisco, et cetera, because we're not going to make it geographically bound. We're always going to have like maybe half local or maybe three out of five local, two out of five not local. And then you get to meet us, and then the relationship starts. And that's what you, that's, now this is actually a really great way to start. And I will, I will say this, uh, the perfect pitch contest is off to a pretty good start because we had a good one last week, and this is, or two good ones last week, and a great one this week. It's going to be pretty competitive. And I think right now you're the lead candidate. You did a great job, Andrew. Uh, and uh, People should study this one because he's got a great idea that's simple, that solves problems, and provides an opportunity, yeah. and is not being done in the market. Um, and at, what's your business model here? Is it just that real estate advertising well, the is, is huge? There's a, there's a lot of there's a local, there's a good local aspect to it. Um, since you know the total operating revenue for all condominium associations in the United States is over uh, 41 billion, so that's a lot of landscapers, plumbers, and everybody. Okay, so you know, local advertising. Yeah, I got it. You can, actually, you can actually make this a service, too, for, for those uh, boards that actually do want to have something like this, a kind of an, an organized uh, place to go, uh, depending on the board's quality, that you could even charge for you know, the, the service to host it and make it, make it uh, more open. It could be a selling point for a condo, that they use this service as, as a way to organize the uh, community. Yeah. Uh, great job, and uh, we want you to check in and keep in touch with Tyler and... Uh, Congratulations, you killed it. Good job. Nice job. Thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate it, and keep up the good work with the show. Thanks a lot, pal. We'll talk to you soon. Um, and just a note, a uh, programming note. Uh, here's the uh, CNN story on my laptop here. We could pull up. And uh, <laughs> CNN did a whole like thing on this. You destroyed tech journalism. Nice right, job. that I've destroyed tech journalism. But the really funny part about this is... Uh, this is so funny. I want a headline like um, that in my the, life. the CNN journalist is trying to like pretend that they actually um, uh, are doing a good job, and they say, "Want to know how hard Jason is laughing?" <laughs> Feldman asked in the video, and nearly spluttering. Spluttering. Spluttering is that a word? I think it S -P -L -U -T -T. is. S P L U T T. Spluttering. I haven't heard spluttering before. Okay, spluttering with anger. This hard, he proceeded to cackle. Blah 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 blah. And the sentence before that, she says, "Calacanis appears to be linked to the 1938 media site, but this connection could not be verified." Okay. Oh my Whoa. gosh. CNN reporter. Oh. There is a way to verify this. Uh -huh. I am at Jason, and my cell phone number is on my phone, and my email is Jason at Calacanis or Jason at Mahalo. You can easily guess it. Lauren Feldman is available on at, at 1938 Media. If you're a journalist at CNN and you say the connection could not be verified, you could easily verify it. It's called emailing or picking up the goddamn phone. Number two, tough girl. I think it's a girl. Julianne Pepitone. Uh oh, she's taken into the name. Julianne Pepitone, staff reporter, and you're probably, I mean, you've probably been only there for 12 months. Uh, but I know it's the first job out of journalism school. But you could type in our two last names into Google, Caliganis Feldman, and see that I've been on three or four puppet shows with him. Obviously, we're friends. And you could look, you, you, you could do a Twitter search, and you could say, search for at Jason and at 1938 Media in the same sentence and see us talking to each other. And then you could establish that there is, in fact, some relationship. And you could actually verify that there is a relationship between the two of us. And what does that sentence mean? I mean, do you have a, I mean, it's just, it sounds like we're talking about, like, some negotiation between two companies, or that, you know, like the w connection between Wells Fargo oh. and Enron could not be verified at the time of the printing of this audio. <laughs> Calacanis appears to be linked to the 1938 media site. You mean Lauren Feldman's site where he has puppets imitate people? Steve Bomber? Ugh. Anyway. I, I think she's link baiting. Is she link baiting? Uh, yeah. oh. So that would and be I incredible. Think, yeah. if, <laughs> yes. If Pep <laughs> I think she got you. I think she nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The joke's on yeah. you, man. If Pepitone <laughs> is 
is, is, is razzing me here, then I give her credit. <laughs> I have a feeling that Pepitone is a first-year journalist or a 60-year journalist, and either of those things is probably not good. Uh, anyway, this, and uh, on another side note, because uh, the show is absolutely out of control this week, uh, this is what happens when I don't sleep, uh, one of the super fans, and there are a legitimate number of super fans of the show right now, and to qualify as a super fan, you need to look at the eight qualifiers which you can obviously get by emailing Tyler, and he certifies people as a super fan. You need to have at least six of the eight qualifiers, which are only available through direct email to Tyler at mahalo.com, to be a super fan and actually get the super fan badge, which then you can put on the inside of your jacket. Anyway, twist super fan membership aside, um, obviously this person who gets an eight out of eight for the qualifiers and is going to get their badge, uh, as well as the secret uh, decoder ring. You can see here. No USB, no iPad. Oh! It's up already. <laughs> <We're not even. laughs> it's pretty. Look at the right inside the picture. Yeah, they got a picture of a USB board. It's like, uh, dear Steve, this is called the USB board. <laughs> here's, here's how it works. It's called the standard. Oh my God! Oh, I, I don't even need two, honestly. Really? One, no. One. I mean, because I, I, I could put a. I could you could put. put you yeah. could. No, that's what. That that's what terrifies Steve Jobs. That's what a megalomaniac control freak he is. And just as a total aside, you would think that the guy having like, I mean, I hate to bring it up, but if you have a near death experience, you could lighten up on the control freakness. You know, like you. We love you, Steve. We love you. When people found out you were sick, I mean, people were. It was like John Lennon being shot. I mean, people love you, Steve. You can put a USB port on your device. We love you. We will not think anything less of you. You could get rid of, you got rid of DRM in MP3s. Yeah, yeah. You could open up the App Store. You could put a little developer mode on an iPhone or on the tablet. And you click developer mode, let you load any application you want. And it gives you a seven part disclaimer that says, if I blow up my product, iPhone, iPad, iTouch, Steve Jobs is not responsible and I should have listened to him. Boom. Let's watch the Dell Mini clip. It's good to have clips in the show. I think it makes yeah, the show like a little the more, a little yeah, clips. Yeah. If we can. If we can. If we can see them. Uh, I wish Alex Miller were still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with uh, one of the Dell guys. Uh, one, you're the sales guy there, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes, yeah. And what do you got? What do you, what uh, do you This have? is the Dell Mini 5. It's yep. an Android device. And uh, it'll be out uh, in a couple months. And what's, it, what's the price going to be? Uh, it'll be out in a couple months. Can you see and the back of it? There you go. It's got a 5 megapixel yeah. camera, 3G. What's the chip? What chip? Everything you want. Arm 11 chip? Somewhere. It's very Android, right? <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you. And you're going to sell it to me for $100 now? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a nice looking, ah! nice looking device. Um, it's pretty nice. Got the 3G chip in it. So everybody should uh, look at my Twitter slash Jason. Um, and uh, retweet no USB, no iPad.postrus.com with the pow hashtag pound twist pound no USB, <laughs> no iPad. And I want to get no USB, no iPad trending. So let's all do that right now. But you can just retweet mine or you can retweet Cal Gallity and G. You know, it's nice they had the 3G in that Mini 5, but honestly, we know adding 3G to a product automatically adds $130 to the price. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. <laughs> um, I digress. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and wasn't there, wasn't there supposed to be some sort of announcement about Verizon having a version of the iPhone or so, maybe unlocking yeah, it or something? A, oh, and you, the greatest part of the keynote was when he says uh, that he. And by the way, to, the, to Emily and to Kenny, I'm just joking about Alex Miller not being here. I know you. It takes a second for YouTube to load. I'm joking. That's a little tribute to Alex, who's in the chat room. Uh, makes him feel good. Uh, and then it makes him regret leaving the show after <laughs> yeah. only seven months, you know. He'll be back. Um, oh, it's making a point. Yeah. I think you're talking about uh, the great thing about the uh, you know, video. Oh, the video. Oh, oh when he did the I've keynote and he too. says AT&T, it's and available on AT&T and everybody yeah. groans. Can we queue up the Steve Jobs keynote to the point at which he mentions AT&T? And you, can you guys check and see if it's audible? Because I heard through a report that the audience, somebody emailed me that the audience groaned when they said AT&T. But I haven't watched the whole keynote. So see if you can queue up. I think probably halfway through the presentation, he talks about AT&T, $15 a month. 
whatever moment that is. I think he groans during it, and if a super fan is in the chat room, you can go do that as well. And already <laughs> pulling up my, uh, I, my, my Twitter for a moment, my God, you guys are a bunch of pranksters. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Everybody is going crazy doing uh, no U the hashtag no USB, no iPad. I mean, this is how we are going to actually, this is how Steve Jobs put cut and paste onto the iPhone. Yeah. He's that true. everybody went crazy. It took two years of lobbying to put cut and paste on the iPhone. It took about 15 years for him to put a second mouse on a yeah, second button true. on a mouse. And you know what? Uh, it's pretty funny. You have to think that somebody emailed Steve Jobs at one in the morning, the night before he's doing that thing, and he has to hear Jason Calacanis. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, because I don't think Steve Jobs knows who. I don't. I've met Steve Jobs twice, both at the D conference, Wall Street Journal D conference. I don't think he knows who Jason Calacanis is. But at this point... I think he does he now. Probably yeah. does now. <laughs> I think he knows who Jason yeah. Calacanis is. And now that the no USB... If that hashtag, no oh, USB, man. no iPad, gets going, like all that has to happen is TechCrunch does a story or Mashable does a story. Can you email our friends over there, Tyler, and sure. just point them to it, the hashtag or whatever, and just tip like one or two... Or can anybody in the audience who knows editor at TechCrunch or editor at Mashable or editor at something or bits, everybody who's a super fan, if you've got... if you've if you're trying to qualify for super fandom and getting the, the, the patch that says super fan twist and the secret decoder it's ring, decoder, yeah. if you want to qualify for that, it is your Geary, G-I-R-I, your humble honor and duty, your duty, uh, to get that hashtag in the hands of a journalist and show them it's trending and retweet it. Because if this becomes a movement, do you realize that I will have totally hijacked the entire launch of the iPad, Steve Jobs' most important thing. We, 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 we will have hijacked the, the pre-launch of it and the post-launch of it, if that trends. Can you imagine if, the, if somebody, because I have no credibility now, well, right? What if we could Supposedly. reroute you, you, all of yeah, Apple's yeah. marketing through your locked-in system? Yeah. That would be awesome. No, I'm basically, this is uh, what, yeah. I am taking over the marketing function at Apple. Right. All Apple, that's it. For going forward, Steve Jobs, <laughs> all Apple marketing and public relations goes through Jason Calacanis. The question, you, though, is if they add the USB port, are you going to buy one? Or is this yeah, all just I'm going to buy one anyway. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah, yeah, sure. I buy one right. of everything. Yeah, this is my rule. Yeah, I'm <laughs> the same way. You're yeah, asking the guy yeah. who's got three phones over here and two earpieces. Here, here's my decision of if I buy something. Yes, I, I, if, I, I, if Steve Jobs problem. holds it here, I buy one. And if he holds it here, I buy two. <laughs> that's basically how I do it. It's how high he holds it above his head. I, buy, I got everything. I, that's what I do. I'm a junkie. I don't do yeah, drugs. No, I, I'm with you. I, mean, I don't I, do drugs. I I'm, don't do any Tiger Woods nonsense. I, I just buy gadgets. I, yeah. That's my crap. A house full of gadgets. Yeah, and yeah. a couple of Cuban cigars. and I like Cuban coffee, too. My Cobita is good. Oof. Uh, okay. Um, where are we at in the show? I, 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 are we, I think that, we're at the, think the interview segment. Are we done? Okay. Are we done? okay. <laughs> no, we, have, we have, still have the interview and news. We're going to try to get all this accomplished. We're an hour and a half into the show. And uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Microsoft. You went there out of school or something? I did. Yeah. So, so I, I, I went there. Uh, I went there out of school. Actually, I went to Accenture. Can you believe that? Or back then it was called Anderson Consulting. Yeah, I sure. did that for like eight months and then realized that that, uh, that that wasn't for me. And the guy who recruited me said, look, he was actually a jobsy in line. He said, do you want to stay with the Navy or come join the Pirates? And so I went to, to join the Pirates back then. Wow, that is a good Ooh. line. It's a great join line. the Navy or be part of the Pirates? Yeah, stay with the Navy, be part of the Pirates. And that's true, because that, that's why I went there. It was, it was still, a, and it was a place, and it still is a place, especially in Bing, that where you can kind of do uh, very disruptive things. And, you know, if they work, you're a hero. If they don't work, well, you know, you have to... You yeah. yeah, you know. The company's not yeah. bankrupt. No, we're not bankrupt. Right. That's good. That's the good news. You're going to be yeah. nice and stable. And how has the company changed in 13 years? Because pre-internet, it was a bit of a mess when the internet happened. Like, they, they didn't seem to know what to do. And then Internet Explorer comes out. It was a little dorky at first, but then it becomes actually the number one browser yeah. overnight. And all of a sudden, Microsoft just takes the entire ship and turns it around the battleship and says, oh, the internet matters. Yeah. They actually did it quite successfully. Yeah. Yeah, it was Gates' famous memo back in, uh, it was actually, I think it was Pearl Harbor Day back in December of 95, 96, I can't think of the date now. But yeah, that was, Gates basically put the mandate out and said, you know, hey, here's everyone now, if you're building a product, you have to make sure you have a, a way to, to get the internet in that product. Uh, and actually, the guy who was in charge of Bing on the business side, my, Yusuf Mehdi, my, my boss, uh, he actually was the guy who was doing the IE stuff back in the, right. in the day. So Yusuf, Yusuf Mehdi's a smart guy. Oh yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a. I and mean, they tapped him to do Bing, yes. basically. 
and make uh, sure it goes right. On the business side, yep. On yep. the business and you have, side. And you have Satya and Chi on the tech side, yes. obviously. And so, so yeah, it's, it is uh, the fun thing about it. What's, what's changed is it's gotten a lot bigger, obviously, yeah. just people. I mean, when I, I started in Building 12, which is this little tiny, it felt like a startup office. It was a tiny little building that had these old oak wooden doors that we used to have all over campus. And, you know, it was crappy lighting and whatnot. It's gone now. Now that's where Bill's, Bill's uh, building is. But it's gotten bigger. Uh, certainly, as things get bigger, as all the startup guys will know who've been acquired, for example, it, you know, things get a little slower for decision making. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's the power, I guess, as well of, of, of Microsoft. Uh, if you're you're able to get into a group like Bing or like these other kind of kind of startup stealthy projects. It, the decision making is that push back down in, into the groups, right? right. So we really have um, a tremendous ability to do things that we think are going to move the market, even if they might not necessarily yeah. be in line with something overall. So. And the Yahoo deal finally getting done after all that back and forth. What impact has that had on just on a day to day basis? Your plans, because really. Have, has anything been actually come to market because of that deal? We hear Microsoft bought Yahoo Search or the rights to it or something. When are we going to actually see some integration? Yeah, it's actually not approved yet. Not so, approved by the uh, by the government. By the yeah, government. Yeah. So the government's got to say okay. Yeah, yeah for antitrust review. So we haven't really haven't done anything. We can't do anything legally. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, with that at all. Right. So um, yeah, pretty early to unfortunately to, to talk about it because it's just, nothing's really happened at this point. So. But the deal is, according to the public reports, if, yeah. You know, if it happens when you do a search on Yahoo. It'll be Bing search. Powered by Bing. Powered right. by Bing. Yeah, Yahoo so. can still have a front end, and they can do cool stuff like search pad and everything else right. on the front end. But yeah, the algo is all handled by, by Bing. Right. And is, that in, is it going to include video and images and all that other stuff you've built, the maps? Or do they get to keep their own maps thing? Or is that all to be TBD? That's a good, I don't, the maps is definitely, I don't know. Uh, the images and video, I think it is still, it, it is ours it, yeah. with Bing's. Um, but uh, I don't know for sure. That might, might even be TBD. It's, it's still, it's pretty... Uh, I know the big stuff is, is obviously just the yeah. key web right now, right? And I don't know. That's a good question. I'll have to go find out. Someone, I'm sure, out there in my agency can tell me uh, yeah. online watching us what the answer is. What, what, <laughs> what, uh, what has been the biggest success so far inside of Bing? What, what is the thing that's really, you know, sort of you guys have said, wow, that, yeah. that's, that's clearly the biggest win we've had. And what's the biggest thing that was sort of a dud that you thought was going to get bigger than it actually did? Well, I think I'll start with the negative first. That's what we do at Microsoft when we look at things. Uh, you know, we, I think the biggest thing that I thought was going to really take search a different direction was the category search. You know, the ability right. when you do a search, we actually put categories on the left-hand side yeah. and break the page up into those categories. Right. Because it is, when, when, you, when you do that against a traditional algo search, right. like you're like, oh, you know, why isn't it always this way? So what way? you mean is comprehensive search, news, video, Video images, or do you no, mean? No, no. It's like if you do a, a, like a, a query for Hyundai Sonata or something like that, right? Uh -huh. Well, what we do is we actually look at the top refinements people do after they do that oh, first yes, query, yes, the right? Oh, yes, secondary so, keywords. Yeah, so they have like reviews and, and right. new and local and everything else. And people so, don't care. It, it's just not. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They don't see the left rail. They don't see the tabs, and they don't associate today the tabs with the grouping. So I thought uh, yeah. it was going to be. I thought you know, like this is this is going to uh, You know what? It's interesting then, when we because obviously Mahalo doing human power yep, search, and yep. we don't do the algorithmic side. We put content and Q and A around it, yep. so we're sort of complementary. But when we did section based searching in our labs. People would talk about, wow, that's really nice that it's nice and clean and organized. Yes. But you're right, people will not make that second click. Uh -uh. And it's, I think it's because Google has just trained people that search is 10 links, and then you refine the search and you click something. How hard is it to crack the metaphor that for you know prior to Google and now Google has continued to search is 10 links? I mean, it's really hard to reprogram people, no? It's really hard. In fact, we do all the eye tracking studies so you can right. see how folks, you know, how the eyes go across the page. And I think. Even, I think even Google released this a while ago. They had their own. But it is. People are very programmed to actually, they hit a page, they get scanned down, they scan up, they scan over, and, they, and they're off to the races. And people have, uh, what, I think as a computer science guy, what, what makes me most sad, uh, I think, about just the state of search generally, forget brands, it's just that people have, I think, kind of come to expect search to do a, a particular thing, which is really a, URL, a keyword to URL map. And what they aren't doing is what all the sci-fi geeks in us want it to do, which is to be more of a kind of an, an intent-based broker. Like, I want people to just have, almost have a conversation, not like to do a dorky, you know, what's the nearest UPS store? But, but yeah, like, those are obviously some queries yeah. that can be. But like, for, I want to have a conversation. I want to understand me. And that's where people, people either have stopped trying to ask those queries because they've given up. They say, no, you know, it's not going to work. Uh, or they just they don't even think that that would be something they could ask an engine. So we've, we've kind of been programmed to almost uh, expect less, and that's that's frustrating. From yeah, a it's tech almost side. like it's a utility. Here's your ten links, right. and you're done. Right, and it's that's, it's, a, it's a it's a sort of like going to the bread store. And uh, you have an analogy here for us, Tyler. What is it like? No, but he, 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 
brings up an interesting point because when search engines originally came out, people had to sort of step back to learn how to yeah. you know, do keyword speak. Yeah. Right. And now yeah, people yeah. are used to doing right. that. And now we, we're ready for them to go back to where they originally Oh, that's were. actually it's like a, caveman talk. Right. No, it's what actually, it is. that is an interesting insight. And I'll yeah. tell you why. Oh. I was going to actually try to finish my sentence and not do that. <laughs> I have to, we have to get into a rhythm here. That when the insight should be pressed and when it shouldn't be pressed. Um, and I don't even know what it is. But the, it is a good insight. Don't do it again. <laughs> only one, if you're going to play the jingle, only one time per insight, please. Uh, that is a very good insight. People wanted to say it in natural language. Yeah. I'm going to recap what yeah, Tyler yeah, said. Yeah. People would have, would have liked to use natural language when the internet search, when the internet search first came out. It wasn't, it, that didn't work. So they learned how to do Boolean search, and, ors, operators, site, mm. colon, this, whatever. Or just nonsense, like movie theater, you know. Right. Zip code or zip code right. movie theater, you know. Um, now, natural language search, uh, semantic search, as some people call it, uh, is actually getting ready for prime time. And now we have to deprogram everybody. <laughs> exactly. We program to do it the wrong way. Yeah. It's a very uh, valuable insight. Well, it's funny, too. And I think. Don't oh. do it. <laughs> oh, well, 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 what's, what's funny, it's very generational, too. I look at, like, uh, and you have, a, you have a, a child now, so you'll see this. I have a five-year-old daughter, and she actually, when she walks up to the computer in the office, she actually asks it natural language questions. Because to her, it's like, well, of course I would ask it natural language questions. I, that's how I speak to people. But I think, it, so there's going to be this weird generational chasm between the, the young who are going to grow up with more of an NLP-based system and those of us who have been around for, you know, 10 years plus with the Internet who have become programmed to actually... Uh, do this this caveman English or caveman language to, to trick the engines into actually returning links back to us. Um, we have another breaking story. This is a special announcement. Listen, I have uh, 20th Century Fox are good friends of mine. Don't worry about it. Uh, there, I've I've just been given word on the on the tweet on the tweeter, twist oh. tweeter. What is it called? The, the with the T and the witter, the Twitter. It, it stumps me. Yeah. Uh, Twitter has filed, according to the Wall Street Journal, uh, to sell up to 100 million dollars oh. in their IPO. Uh, congratulations to my good friend Elon Musk and the team at Tesla for making wonderful cars and to uh, this extraordinary uh, accomplishment after the haters said that um, your company was not going to survive, frankly. And I always knew it would, and it's a wonderful product, and it's really great to see a technology company uh, be able to go public and change the world uh, and do something as audacious as create a new car company, which really nobody's done successfully since Jeep, which was a, a, a contractor to the, to yes, the government, yeah. was able to commercialize the Jeep. Uh, uh, quick it, quick yeah. question. Yeah. Does the Tesla have a USB? Oh. In fact, the Tesla has a USB port, <laughs> and the Tesla has an iPod adapter. Thing adapter. Here, yeah. Both. It has both. Uh, and when you bring it in for service, the guy takes a Tesla USB key, puts a Tesla USB key, and downloads your driving data, and then you're, you're part of like a little group. And I, I don't know if I can say this. The... Tesla Model S, which I have, have serial number I'm, one. You have number one? I, I have number I, one I, and number 85. I'm like 900. Are you really? But, yeah, but I'll You put a deposit down? Oh, yes. You know yes. how I got number one and number 85? Because you had the road server, right? And you had the program. Plus, you probably know Elon and those guys. Yes. Yeah. But I also sent two full deposits, uh, two $50,000 checks, in a FedEx envelope the day they announced, they announced it? The, the pricing. So you have, you have more, you have more uh, courage Guts. in the company than I did. I, well, yeah. he's, my, he's my boy. I know, I know. Uh, I know. He's an investor in my company. Right, right, I have right. no financial stake in Tesla. I'm going to beg for friends and family stock if I can get it. And I don't buy stock in anything, but I will buy stock in that. I'm I so think. excited for that car. I also, can't even, I can't it's going to be amazing. I can't even, I'm so excited for that car. I've been in it. I've, <sighs> I've seen it. I, I, he, Alon and I would be out at dinner, and he'd be like, check this out. And he'd show me like the clay model <sighs> pictures of it, and I was just like, this thing is butter. And the he, interface is just epic. The interface is 24-inch monitor. Ugh. And so I don't exciting. know if this is announced or not, but let me just say it this way. You will not need to put a USB in to get the data off of there in the future. Mm. There will be another way to get the data off of there. Mm. What could that be? Mm. It requires no physical components. <sighs> no, there's going to be like, we have like the... 
if I say it low, no, between right, about right. thousand just, people just will hear. Just whisper it to me. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be uh, what do they call that? The three G, four G, whatever's out. It's going to have three or four G in the dashboard. So when the car. No, you're going to be able to listen to Pandora. Yeah, oh yeah. Right? On the that, dashboard. That's, that's but if announced. something happens, has been announced. Yes. Okay, I didn't know if it yeah, 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 something yeah, yeah. happens to the car. God forbid. No, it will. It sends something to yeah, yeah, yeah. back, and they yeah. might be able to fix yeah. it on like that on end, store. download like, a driver. Like on, like on store. So when yeah. you're at dinner next time with your buddy, yeah. tell him that their website team needs to get more pictures up in the in, in the site. Yeah, people, people, people want more. more you, I think they should pictures. do. I think they should do a they like, like a monthly real, webcast they should. on UStream. With they, should, they totally should. Little innovations. I mean, people would go obsess about like. Oh yeah, I you know now. little things yes. like the steering wheel. So yeah. you show the iteration. One week, do this iteration of the steering wheel. Plus, I think we need more we need more folks who actually are excited about this car and and go and go buy it because this is a big and, thing for our country. And uh, so. yeah, where are we? So, at? Uh, well, we revenue. Yeah. We're doing pretty well, thanks. Revenue soared this year to five nine. The three million dollars in revenue from yes. five hundred eighty thousand the year before. <laughs> uh, that's pretty tight. Uh, they lost a little bit of money, but you always do that when yeah. you're building out and having uh, a bunch of uh, showrooms everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's bring in uh, our good friend Rich Demuro is back because Lon is away. Rich Demuro, come on in and let's do the news. Rich Demuro is he here for the news. See you, Rich. <laughs> Rich Demuro is here for the news. So Did you do episode one or two? What did you yeah, do? I, I think I was episode one. Episode yeah. one and back at episode 38. Thank you yeah. for coming in and pitch hitting for Lon Harris, uh, who is at the Sundance Film Festival, who's got a very, very understanding boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Ke that's my Kevin Pollock impersonation. He does that during the show, but he can he can freeze. Yeah. I mean, he can literally yeah, yeah, freeze, yeah. Yeah. and he does it for a very uncomfortable period of time, and then everybody starts laughing. It's very it's very good. Uh, Rich, uh, let's talk about what's in the news. You already got the biggest news: the Tesla. Oh, IPO. did I preempt it? You already got it. I let was me hear like, it, let I'm going to go in there and I'm going <laughs> to have it. You know, tell them the news, but Sorry, you already have I mean, it. Sorry, I, I, I happen to look at my Twitter, but go ahead. Read, that's all read I know. It as I, if, I, yeah, I don't that, have any more. That's all I have, that's all I have that's is it. Tesla, Tesla 100 IPO, million. Well, but isn't million. the format like you, you say a couple facts no. and then you hand it to me with like some insightful question? No, yeah, but that one I was just going to throw. You already got it. But anyway, that's that's good for them. That's exciting. That's huge. What it means is when an IPO happens, since you asked, what an IPO is just another type of financial transaction. Just like raising money from a venture capitalist or raising angel investing or getting a bank loan or getting a government loan, it's a financial transaction. What is unique about that financial transaction is that it then creates a marketplace for the stock, which means the valuation be and, the, and, the, and the, the value in the company can trade more freely. A certain percentage of the shares are available to the public. That's called the float. Not all of the shares are available, but a good number of them. Um, the iPad groan was not audible. I'm just I'm hearing word that the iPad groan is not audible. If somebody in the audience can find the groan, well, I'm or sure they, they must have edited it out. They, they probably they it the edited web. it out. Yeah, you're right. If somebody finds some video of the groan, I would really like to see that. Um, so anyway, what's exciting about that is it means the early investors who've been at this for five or six years will get what's called liquidity. They'll be able to sell some shares on the open market. And other people will get to buy into it. The people who will buy into it are the big hedge funds, are the big stock traders, your 401k. And they can say, hey, we think electric cars are going to be the future. This is an investment vehicle for us now. It opens it up to a wider group of people, which means the company can raise more money and more money to do something truly extraordinary, which is put out 20, 30,000 electric cars a year and then eventually 200,000. Mm -hmm. Because the word is there's a third type of car coming. Third. Yeah, there's oh. going to be a third type of car after the four door. A couple years after the four door. Okay. okay. Wow. Um, and that is, I think I read on one of the blogs that it's a BMW Series Three type of car. Mm. Not obviously mm. a BMW so Series Three. They have Mercedes. The, right. Yeah, between but more the of a and the somewhere between the, the two. Three, you have the two yeah. seat Roadster, yeah, and you have yeah. the seven, five seven, plus two, five plus two yeah. sedan. Sedan. Yeah. Um, so very you exciting. Have some news for them. you want to talk about? All right, yeah. Let's let's, let's go to the next one. <laughs> let's start with this one. Keep this, uh, Facebook. Somebody's got to get back to Seattle. <laughs> no, I don't actually. But you know, hey, I thought maybe our viewers would actually want to you know do some work or something. No, love our you know. viewers don't do any work. Oh. They're all they're all at work right now getting paid. <laughs> Big Twitter, this in the background. Like you know what it. I love right, is thank you. Check I go up to one of the developers' desks at Mahalo, <laughs> and I'm looking, and he's got like you know they have the code and the codes on the screen. He's a great developer, so I, I can say this without 
pissing him off or whatever. But he's not um, I, I look. I'm. I'm just talking to one other guy, and I look, and I see something moving behind his code, and I realize he's got a YouTube video transparently. Uh, that he's got like yeah, opaqueness yeah, yeah, opaque between his windows. Uh, his coding window, and there's a YouTube video behind it. Smart. What is the video playing? He goes, "Oh, it's just some funny skit comedy thing from Andy Samberg or whatever." I was like, "Oh, that's cool," and I realized, "Oh my god!" So they can play whatever videos they want and be doing playing like World of Warcraft behind the code. Their code. Genius. That as is. long as they, as long as they. Uniques keep going up. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> Watch all the Simpsons you want, kids. <laughs> let's just keep the uniques growing. Top 100, please. Quantcast. Go ahead. All right, so let's talk about uh, Facebook. Apparently, they are working on a four-square killer, according to Business Insider. A source tells them that Facebook is working on a feature that will let users check in on their phones and broadcast their location to their friends. Now, we know Yelp also uh, rolled out a feature like this this week as well. But they say Facebook check-ins will be more valuable because People on your Facebook are generally friends that you really want to hang out with, mm -hmm. unlike uh, you know sometimes Foursquare and, and Goala. Um, so the question is, does this spell doom and gloom for the rest of these startups, or will Foursquare or uh, Facebook just buy one of these instead of doing it themselves? Um, I am slightly conflicted. So uh, full disclosure, I angel invested a small amount of money in Goala, and I tried to invest in Foursquare. I think both of these things are great, and they're their own sort of type of communities. It's sort of self-contained. Um, I Yelp launched their check-ins. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of products will have check-in as a concept. Yeah. Twitter is already sort of got check-ins. You tweet, you're checking in. Yeah. You, you update your status, you're checking in. Uh, so yeah, it, it is a feature of these things. Um, I think there is, I don't think Facebook will buy anything. Uh, there is a good chance Twitter will buy Foursquare or uh, Gowalla because uh, Evan Williams who runs Twitter has ethics and morals and is uh, the kind of guy who would like to buy another startup company and incorporate that team into something bigger. Uh, Zuckerberg is uh, pretty much a thief. It's pretty, uh, I mean, I don't mean to go on a tangent here. You were asking about this check-ins. But if you look at Facebook's entire career, Zuckerberg's entire career, um, according to the settlements, he settled with his first employer because he stole their idea for Facebook and made Facebook, correct, right, Tyler? Who is that? Those two the Olympic swimmers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is all going to come out when his movie comes out. but. He stole, he stole from them, according to lawsuits. I mean, I, I don't even know if I have to say according to a law. I mean, he stole from them, right? That's what they claimed. And then they settled. Then there was some partner he had, the guy who was his partner. And then he screwed him. And then he settled with him. And then they put his name back on the website. Then he stole, Zuckerberg stole Twitter's entire business model, changed their whole model to be theirs. This is what Zuckerberg does. Zuckerberg doesn't have a creative bone in his body. He's a thief. All he does is steal other people's ideas. I absolutely expect him to steal Foursquare, to steal Gowala's ideas. I expect him to steal Mark Pincus's ideas with Zynga. I think that Zuckerberg is, has low moral ethics, uh, or his team does. They believe they should steal everything from any other company, and it doesn't matter. And I think that they're getting a reputation for being non-startup friendly, non uh, just not a friendly company to other companies. And I think that their reputation is going to be significantly damaged if they don't start having a little bit more of a uh, conciliatory approach to how they build product. And I think, you know, one of the things I talked to Mark Pincus about, who's been a friend of mine for a long time, and he's got his whole ecosystem right in there, is, you know, you need to be very careful with Facebook because I, I would not trust them with your entire business inside of Facebook. You, you need to get Farmville and Fishville and Mafia Wars out of Facebook as quick as possible and standalone applications on the iPhone, you know, on Windows, whatever, you know, uh, so you diversify your revenue because one day you could wake up and Zuckerberg could just, the same way he stole from two previous partners, the same way he uh, screwed over Ev Williams and Twitter and stole all their ideas, right. he could just kick you out of the ecosystem and say, you know what, here's, my, uh, here's Facebook poker. Facebookville. Facebookville, exactly. Now, this could all be just a misperception of mine. I could be wrong, Zuckerberg. You could be the most original guy on the planet. You could, it could have been a misunderstanding with your first two partners who sued you or whatever you settled with. That could be a misunderstanding. It could be a misunderstanding that you stole all of Twitter's ideas and the entire company at Twitter hates you uh, and thinks that you know, you're not a nice person. I could be wrong. But I do think that he needs to grow up and sort of think, and also what they did with privacy, I think was just ridiculous over and over again with the privacy mistakes. I think that he's very selfish and he needs to grow up a little bit. And the people around him need to say, listen, 
you're not, it's not a long-term strategy in the internet business to go steal people's ideas constantly. Uh, I mean, you could have short-term success with that, and he has. I think, that, again, to give him credit, I think the app platform was pretty cool. Though. The app platform, I, was, you know, okay. I, I think that was quite good. Perfect pushback. Yeah. He was the first person to do that, and he said, very much like Gates did, you know, a visionary thing, let's create an app. And he gave, in that case, he gave credit to mm -hmm. Microsoft and said, I want to build the next Microsoft in a social networking environment and a platform. And it's probably why Microsoft invested in him, because uh, he gave him such a great compliment. <laughs> no, because it was obviously a good idea yeah, to invest in him. Yeah. But I, I, you know, there's a thing in poker called overplaying your hand. And there was a saying uh, that's very important from an important ph uh, philosophical leader of our time, which is don't get high on your own supply, uh, from Scarface. Uh, and you don't want to get high on your own supply. And I think true. Zuckerberg is just, he's teetering at that moment where the privacy issues and the stealing has to stop. And he has to start really thinking about what he does because he's on a very big stage. And he's going to bring the heat down from the government with this privacy issues that he keeps, you know, the settlement over Beacon. He's, gonna ha he's got 20 lawsuits <coughs> now or whatever because of the privacy issues with the change of terms of service where they just, you know, you okay your way to exposing everything you've ever done. Canadians just yesterday launched a new uh, investigation into it too. Right, so I mean, this is why I'm saying like, I, I'm not really beating up on Zuckerberg here. I've met him three or four times. He's a cordial, nice guy. I, I was at the TED uh, Edge dinner, which is like the billionaire's dinner at TED. Like, I'm not invited to the TED conference for obvious reasons. But uh, I go to the, the, the dopest dinner party there, which like 40 people go to, and at the table was like Steve Case, Zuckerberg, Ev Williams, me, you know, like it was, and Larry Page and Sergey. It was pretty dope. That's nice. It's like this 2,000 people who go to a TED, and then there's 40 people who go to the hottest dinner at TED. Wow. And I got into it, and I've been to it, and I, I'm going to it again this year because my, my friend John Brockman runs it from edge.org. Anyway, he's a nice guy. He's obviously very talented and hardworking, and I am. You know, very happy for him with his accomplishments, and I hope the IPO goes great. But you got to be careful, man, because you're just right on that edge of people hating you. And as somebody who people hate, I can speak to credibility with this. <laughs> you know, there are Apple fanboys out there who hate me. You got to be careful. You can't overplay your hand. I'm not overplaying my hand with the Apple fanboys. They want a USB port too. That would be nice. Anyway, what do you think? You, th you agree that Facebook has stolen their way to success? Yes. Uh, As a yes, Microsoft I have employee, no comment on this uh, <laughs> particular. I'm, right sitting, I'm sitting here, kind of going, Stephen, what, what the hell am I doing? What have I right got right myself here? into? Is there a place I can? The Wall Street Journal is watching too, yeah. so whatever we say, oh, just gets yeah, they're just going to print it out. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm still white, and you'll be right in. Bing, on it. Microsoft acknowledges and condones Calicanus's rant. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Oh God. That's kind of cool thing about Microsoft is that they have chilled out over the last decade. They're pretty cool about their public perception, and Gates is pretty chill, and Bomber is pretty chill. Uh, about everything. They Getting better. Definitely. They, can, they, they used to be yeah. like a little uptight. Yeah. Like Apple. <laughs> Nobody's as uptight as Apple. All right, so let's talk about the worst announcement this week. The worst timing for an announcement this week. It was Yelp. So during the entire there was iPad, an I, I didn't actually hear it either. Yeah. iPad, the whole iPad thing, they announced that they actually got up to $100 million in funding huh. from Elevation uh, Partners. Yes. Oh, so now it's not $100 million cash. They didn't get, yeah. they got like $25 million cash. Maybe you can explain this. So it was like $25 million cash and then $75 million in like stock that they can buy from their employees or the, the investors can buy. Okay. It in. What does that mean exactly? Um, I, I, I haven't read the announcement. Uh, what it probably means is, that they ha they received an investment from Elevation Partners, which has a lot of money. That's the venture firm slash private equity kind of firm that has a ton of money that Bono's involved in. Um, and they probably have the ability to draw down more money if they want it. Okay. So just like if you got a loan, like a home owner's own, a homeowner's loan for a hundred thousand dollars, they'd say we have a hundred thousand here, and you can take another hundred if you want to. You have that option at your option to take it if you do. You know, these other things kick in. So maybe that's it. I don't know exactly. But uh, Yelp is a huge success. Uh, they're making money. They've got tons of traffic. They're in the top 100 sites in the United or close to it. I think maybe they're 120 on Quantcast. Uh, so they're, they're doing tremendous. They have a great team, uh, great product, mm -hmm. very defensible because they, they have all the uh, uh, elites. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so it's, it's just done fabulously. And we have 3,500 viewers. What? Wow. Wow. Okay. 
It's, uh, a, it's a tech meme. <laughs> it's it's, it's a tech, tech meme. meme. <laughs> it, actually, maybe tech. It's probably what it is. It's oh, tech, did tech yeah, meme retweet it? We did retweet. Yeah. Oh, okay. So tech ah. meme retweeted it. So uh, basically, Lon Harris, you're fired. <laughs> Mr. Muro of tech meme will be doing the news from now <laughs> Thank on. Thank you. If you bring 3,000 people with you every week, I'm, I'm dead hey. serious. Lon Harris is done. Oh, this is what happens. You go I, one week. You go that's one week see, to Sundance. It's like a 7x you increase in viewers. Snooze, yeah. you lose, Lon Harris. That's, that's, what, that's what Ryan Seacrest did to Rick Dees. Did he really? Day, I mean, he, did, he was on the show like one day, and the next thing you know, it's gone. I mean, I'm not saying that, but I'm. Dude, so now we're now we're, now, now we're accusing. But you're not, not saying that. No. No. <laughs> okay, Mr. Seacrest. Now we're accusing Seacrest of thieving, Zuckerberg of thieving. Would you like to sit in this chair? Well, don't like that. Would you be more comfortable in this chair, Rich? There's a prompter right there. Rich, if you if you feel more comfortable in this chair, just let me know. I was making a point. That's what happened. But if you if you can handle this chair, you can't go on vacation. That's that's the thing. These famous stars can never go on vacation. No, that one of the users says it was it was five thousand before the new segment started so you, but that oh. was probably when you guys tweeted you probably tweeted before we you went did on. i did Cheer okay right so there you go okay uh so roku 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 oh. i don't uh, have a roku go ahead neither do i so this is a little box a little set top box one. that lets yeah. you yeah. stream media uh, most most of you probably know yeah. what it does yeah. right now they stream uh, netflix and amazon pandora whatever uh the device is about a hundred dollars they want to raise 30 million dollars to start this 100 channel set top service to compete with cable tv hmm. so think about it makes Genius. sense over uh, the interwebs? Over the web. So, so there's a little problem with that. Though. Yeah, slight problem yeah, with the bandwidth there, yeah, but okay. Yeah, well, yeah. okay, but cast meter and everything else. Yeah, that yeah. is going to be an issue. Yeah. But think about it, a Twist channel. Why can't you have that tomorrow? Where you just I sit there, I, I there's a my Twitlive TV. Just goes. Yeah. All day. Awesome. So smart idea for them. Might be cool, cool idea. Uh, yeah, it's a great idea. I just don't know that it's practical that if they get a million people with this, it would shut the internet down and they would be blocked. Well, just that, the fact that Comcast in many markets actually is, is you know... They've got to throttle it at a certain some, point. Some kind of How do they get around this? Usage. This is their business is to stream. Well, Can they do that? They, streaming, if somebody, let's say somebody owns this device and they watch 10 hours a month, that's one thing. But people watch five hours of TV a yeah, day. Right. That means you're talking about 15 times the amount of usage. Uh, so I don't think this can work unless they put something in head ends, exactly. like servers, and they have those things looping. You right. know, so you basically it's called multicast. Is that what it's multicast yep. technology? Exactly. Which Internet Two has, I believe. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but people have been talking about multicasting for a long time, which is you tune in and you have all the streams. You tune into a fiber line or something, and all the streams are already there, and you're just sort of tapping into much them. Like, much like files. Yeah, much exactly. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Um, but I think the head end could be. A, that's an interesting idea. Tough for a small company to go to all the head ends around yeah. the. Yeah. It but, sounds uh, like an interesting idea. Love the idea. Uh, I don't have a Roku unit, but I can tell you this: I do have a Mac Mini attached to my uh, screen. Uh, my. Samsung 52 inch OLED, whatever, or it's a, it's an LED. It's not OLED. It's not an OLED. LED, but it's a. They say it's a, a fake LED. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that it's would not be OLED. LED. Yeah, it's an LED. Um, and I will, and I also have Netflix on my um, Samsung Blu-ray player. Mm -hmm. However, I use the Mac Mini because it's easier to go through the interface mm -hmm. and put things into the watchable queue. So, and then I also go to Hulu and watch yeah. stuff, and then hit full screen. Or you can yeah. go to YouTube now, like we discussed last week. And so I, I think this idea of a device that does this is replaced by the computer that's attached to your thing. And Microsoft has Windows Media Center, which a lot of people love, mm -hmm. and it's a pretty dope product as well. Yes. So and, and, and the cool thing with the, uh, with the iPad, uh, you can watch all the Hulu stuff full screen. Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, wait. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no, yeah, they don't support that. Flash. Oh, I'm sorry. They don't. Oh, yeah. OK, uh, hold on a second. Maybe we should. I yeah. need somebody to create another yeah, there you go. blog for me. No flash. <laughs> no flash. No, no iPad. iPad. <laughs> no justice. No peace. No flash. <laughs> no iPad. Somebody oh, create. Somebody get the domain name. No. No flash. No flash. No iPad. No iPad. No iPad. Put it on posteris, and let's start a second movement, which is hashtag pound. No flash. No iPad. Let's really stick it to Steve Jobs. Even though it won't work. <laughs> Next story. Uh, okay, the Flash blog I think had a funny thing today where they had like the iPad with like five or ten websites, mm. all with that little, oh, the little blue uh, block. <laughs> that's a blue block that says. You need um, to install a plugin. Jira, yeah. um, Adobe owns Flash, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a little uh, Lego that Steve Jobs gives to Adobe to f with them every time he breaks their business. Here's a little Lego for you kids at Adobe. They just build like this huge. Yeah, he's, every time he gives them a little Lego in the mail. I like how the, the, when those pop-ups come up on the browser, it says you need to update your device, implying like you have some. <laughs> yeah, the, that's a pretty good one, right? Yeah. You yeah. need to update yeah. your affiliation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got it's, some antiquated technology. You need to, 
You need to update whatever. It's just it's unconscionable, and it, it, these Apple fanboys and apologists, which I include a large swath of the press in, they're like, oh, it's good looking and it's got a nice case. You know what? I have to be honest. Like, here's the case of the Google oh, phone, Nexus and one, yeah. uh, that's a pretty sweet looking case. It didn't come from Apple. That's as good looking as an iPhone case. The, I don't know, where's HTC based? In China, uh, Korea, Taiwan, Taiwan. Taiwan. Taiwan? By the way, Steve Jobs doesn't make these cases in his backyard or in San Jose. They're made in Taiwan and China. Anybody can have a sexy case. Google's got a sexy case. Have you seen a Zoom 2? Speaking of Microsoft, it's a sexy beautiful case. sexy case. It, Steve Jobs does not... T- message to technological journalists. Stop mentioning the sexy case. That's not owned by Steve Jobs. He has not patented the concept of a sexy case. Here's a sexy case. I gotta tell you too quickly, the, the, the new IBM, uh, or I'm sorry, oops, sorry, Lenovo uh, yes. think, hybrid ThinkPad with, right. has the screen that pops off the, the keyboard, so you can, it's, it's a full oh, PC, yeah. right. and then you poop and it pops off, and you uh-huh. have this slate. I play with it at uh, down at CES, unbelievable. What does that run, like a G? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they have the price on it. I think it's twelve. I want to say. Yeah, yeah. It was so basically, beautiful. it's it's in shooting distance of the high end. At the high end. Plus with the get, USB plus port. Plus you get free. Yeah. Full plus an operating PC, system. Plus, an OS. plus you yeah. get an operating system as opposed to yeah. like essentially what Steve Jobs has done is you remember the early version of Windows was runtime. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So when I was a kid, I set up Windows at Amnesty International. It was my first IT job in like nineteen ninety. And I had to set up PageMaker. Oh, yeah. All and this. PageMaker, Atlas PageMaker, mm-hmm. was the Quark Express of that time, yeah. which is how you used to lay out magazines when there were these things called magazines, <laughs> uh, which were print <laughs> publications, sort of like a blog. Magazines were like blogs today, uh, but Six they were printed behind. on paper. Yeah. And they would come out <laughs> monthly that? instead of daily. <laughs> what? That's, what a, that's what a magazine used to be. For people who, Yeah, it's, they would come out monthly. Wow. You would wait every month, and you'd get it in the mail. And then you'd read it over 30 days and mail. wait for the next one to arrive. Yes. Yes, it was cra- there were, well, there was this thing. There was this thing called the postal mail. And people would, <laughs> carry your, people would carry your blogs to you <laughs> in print format, and they would give you your blogs to read. Wow. It's like the They Kindle would come every experience. day with your blogs. Yeah, it's also, the, so they, they would deliver you a Kindle every right, day. Right, every day. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, would, they give you print, print. Oh, print. Like paper. Okay. Like, you know when you go to the bathroom, that thing? That, that yeah. used to be in a, in a more rigid form of toilet paper. Okay. You know the three shells? Yeah, nobody gets that reference. Nobody knows what the three uh, shells is from. Oh, what movie? Shells. What movie was that from? The three Idiocracy? shells. Idiocracy. No. Somebody in oh. the chat room explain to these dorks what. <laughs> Come on, guys. The three shells. Demolition Man. Thank you. Yes. Nice reference. Wow. Oh, in the de- in Demolition and, Man. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. Right. Uh, it's, and with Wesley Sandra Snipes Bullock and, and Wesley Snipes, right? Or is it Sylvester Stallone? Yes, it was Sylvester Stallone, Wesley, Wesley Snipes, Snipes and I believe Sandra Bullock. Bullock. Yes, that's right. And he, and they're also the guy from Saturday Night Live. Who's oh, a funny yeah, Rob guy. Schneider. Rob Schneider. Yeah, yeah. And he goes to the bathroom and he has to take care of business. Oh, and right. he's like, Where's the toilet paper? And they're like, Well, there's the three shells. And he's like, What do you do with the three shells? And they also laugh, oh, What do you do with the three shells? <laughs> and you're like, What do you do with the three shells? And they're like, The three shells. And it's three shells. And you, I guess you take the three shells and you aim them somehow. And it, that was magic. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And then every time you curse in the scene, uh, somebody pull up the scene from YouTube. We'll play it at the end of the show, of the the three shell scene. It's got to be on YouTube because they've stolen Google stolen every piece of video that belongs to a movie studio already. So we'll prove that point in about ten seconds. <laughs> I've alienated the entire tech industry with uh, one program. Really what happens when you have a for, yeah. seven week old and you have not slept? I so told three, you li- the show. Literally yeah. slept three hours last night. Literally. Anyway, um, so every time you curse, you get a ticket, and yeah, there's right. little dispensaries, ticket dispensaries right. everywhere. Yeah. So he's like, the three, th- the three shells are BS. And he goes, but you've been fine for using the term. And he's like, you know what? You're a mother. Beep, 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 beep. And he goes, <laughs> like five pieces of paper. He takes all five pieces of paper and he goes to the stall. <laughs> he's going to use the tickets to wipe his butt. There you go. Pretty funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, and every place to eat was a Taco Bell. That's right. They oh, remember that? That's right. They, it's, Demolition Man was a good movie because it really had. And you remember when he crashed the car? And the, air, the, the foam. The foam. Yeah, the I always want that bag. though. Yeah. yeah, it just went boof. It, Rich Demuro's writing down Demolition I need, Man. I need to rent this one. I, I guess I haven't seen this. <laughs> and Salt is Illegal. That was good too. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about. Oh, that, that was so great. My car turned into cannoli. What a good film that was. I let, you know what? Even bad sci-fi yeah. is good. I agree. It's like pizza. And we're going. I'm taking the Mahalo like Battlefield Earth. I got thirty tickets to. Um, this theater called the Golden Theater. What is it called in Pasadena? 
golden something oh, theater. Yeah, gold, the recliners oh, and yes, stuff. Sure. And Thirty dollars a really ticket. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I bought the whole theater out for the Mahalo Dev team. We're going tonight. Thirty dollars a ticket. You drink wine and eat cheese yeah. and act like you're a fancy dancy wow. first class passenger, like a Microsoft director or something. Oh yeah. You're taking first class back <laughs> to Seattle. I'm sure. You should see where I sat today. Yeah, Southwest <laughs> in the middle seat. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, like, what, it, you can go first class if it's over five hours, right? No, no, no not domestic. No, no. We all. Oh, coach. but international, you can no, go no, business. You, yeah, not me. Well, it depends. Not as a director anymore. level. It's not even level so much as it is how often you do it. So, uh, uh, but th we pretty much banned uh, business, no business class business. travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, look, it was people were you know losing jobs left and right across the thing. It's really all I, right, I can, all I right. Can, even my even the mighty Microsoft. Uh, even me, I today I flew so down I'm taking them seat. to see the book of middle, Eli. Middle seat. Yeah. Middle seat. Even today. with all those frequent flyer miles. Ugh. I kind of booked this one late. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know what I do is my assistant gets that Southwest. You pay ten extra dollars. They give you a drink, and you get to get on the plane first. And I do a lot of the quick flights yeah, back and forth. Yeah, yeah. I pay the extra ten bucks yeah. so that I can be in the first row because I don't know what it is about Southwest, but there's always like seven uh, uh, grandmas in oh, front of me, really yeah. and I can't get off the plane because they're doing the spinner. You know that move where they're just like they're just going in a circle. Like I get this thing, and then I got this thing, and then they're spinning back over here. Like I get this, thing, and I'm just. I'm trying to get off because I got the car waiting. I'm going to a meeting and I'm trying to rush off the plane right. in the valley because I'm late. So I sit in the first row. I got my bag right here. Whoop. Yep. And I just go, they're like, whoop. I'm one hand, boom, out the gate. I, was I on, jump. Yeah, I, I was on MD80 today, which are narrow aisles anyway, right? And, and uh, the, the person two hours ahead of me, uh, I don't think I'd ever flown before. And so they, uh, they didn't understand when the plane lands, you get off. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of people who it's their first time at the airport right. every time. Every time, and so it's I, their first time. And how long do you have to wait before it's rude to say, "Would you please move?" Well, I and mean, I also sure. like really, you don't know that you have to take your shoes off, yeah, and the jacket, oh, man. and the hat, yeah, and, and the laptop comes out of the bag, right? And, and you can't have a 16 ounce bottle of water away. You know, put the no. Leatherman yeah. has the, the gun. Samurai you can't sword. Take the gun yeah. with you. you. Can't have a samurai sword. Yeah. No, I don't understand this. Anyway. And then the other thing for, for the people on the on on the occasion of your first time at baggage check. Um, I feel like making like one of those little Hallmark cards. On the occasion of your first time <laughs> traveling, uh, when you go to the baggage check, it's a big oblong round thing. Yes. And the bags come down, and they go around in a circle. You can be technically, and this is very hard to follow, but I'm gonna, let me just, I'm gonna say it a couple times. Mm -hmm. You have the whole, it's a circle. Circles go around. Mm -hmm. The bag comes down, you can be anywhere in the circle and get the bag. If you happen to miss it, there is no need to jump <laughs> over my shoulder while I'm reading my BlackBerry, knock it out of my hands, across the thing, have it shatter into three pieces while I'm in the middle of an email to a very important person to get your bag. When it's going to be there, the, it's, it's going to come, come around again, it's the and there, half the circle is empty. Yeah. That's how the circle works. It's like the three seashells. Yeah. No, it, it, it honestly is like a science fiction movie that people do not know how to behave at the airport. It's true. These are these are the true terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma. They're is terrorizing. The they should have. She's you should won. get sorted <laughs> by airport IQ when you come in. Obviously, it should they, be like they, they over a hundred airport they tried fast. Line. They had like the black yes. lane, the green lane, yes. and the red lane. Yes, yeah. it was called the, the stupid lane right. and wow. the. Half a brain lane, but no one, no one, no one. Yeah, right, nobody opts into the stupid yeah, lane. No. You don't want to admit You're not that. You're going to be in that right. lane. So, so then really. they called it like the taking your time lane. Right, I you know, go to the expert lane. It never here. works. It, the black diamond lane. It's never black diamonds. <laughs> yes, I did just throw my blackberry. There's a carpet in here. It's fine. Okay, uh, let's get another story in before we run out of time. Okay, so here, here's a nice story for uh, all you startups out there. So this startup raised 200. And, oh, this is ripped from. The headlines at Tech Meme. Oh, so this nice. was on the site. Did you just get a plug week? in for Tech Meme? Of course, Meme? I have to. Come yeah. on. Somewhere it's Gabe Rivera story. smiling. Yeah. We, we, um, I look at it all the time. So I feel like I'm going to get a bill from Gabe Rivera for your time. No, no, no. Well, I hope not. It's my lunch hour. Uh, lunch are hour. you a full time employee of Tech Meme? I am a full time employee there. Benefits right? or just like a, give uh, a little cash every week? Uh, it's a freelance thing. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I'll there. Get you. Okay. Um, Does so that mean you're getting benefits and then Megan's not? Is that what this is about? Because I don't want to get in the middle of it. Yeah, this is really awkward. All right, keep all going. I didn't mean to make it awkward. <laughs> okay, so it's a nice um, table. so the <laughs> so this startup raised two hundred and thirty thousand dollars just using LinkedIn. 
230,000 using LinkedIn. According to the Irish Times, companies sent out a message to 700, or they sent out a message to 700 of their contacts on there via LinkedIn, mm -hmm. possible investors, uh, came back, 200 people responded, and they came out with $230,000, US dollars. Uh, Thank you for reading this story because like, now my LinkedIn is going to be filled with even right, more people yeah. asking for money. It's like 70 euros though. Yeah. So yeah, it was like <laughs> five bucks. <laughs> uh, it doesn't US pesos. The, the name of the company is, is Goshido. It's a team is collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> software. Oh, what, Shishido? Go, Goshido. Go, go, Goshido. Goshido. So I guess it's some mean? kind of uh, Irish In, name. I don't know. Oh, Goshido. Yeah, that's, that's not Goshido. Japanese. Yeah. Goshido. I thought it was Shoshito. <laughs> like so to you. it's yeah. a lesson that there's not just one way to do things, and you've learned that in your yes, in your you experience. Can, yeah, I mean, you it's not a raise, ton of money, but that's not bad. Why Combinator for, starts a lot of great companies yeah. on fifteen thousand. Really, like, what does it cost? I mean, really, the, there's one cost today in startup companies in general. It's opportunity cost of an intelligent person who know, who's technically able to do things. So you look at a company like CitySource, who is at TechCrunch 50. It's like a programmer and a marketing guy. They built the product. It's out in the market. Now they're raising money to get the business guy, to get the salesperson, to get more tech people. But that's all it takes. Two people make an iPhone application, boom, you're in business. It's really that simple. So the people who are compl the guy with Maroon Door, he's like, I built the website. I'm kind of technical. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but it's at least he's got a foot in the game, mm -hmm. you know, he's in uh, the game, yeah, yeah. as opposed to riding that's the right. pine, you know? And, and I think that's the, that is the lesson of This Week in Startups, is you do, if you're riding the pine, you deserve to ride the pine, and if you're in the game, you're in the game, and don't worry about it. Okay, Good you, for want, them. you want me to give you another one? Yeah, give us another one. All right, let's, uh, let's see, do you want to talk? Oh. People are enjoying the show, give us another one. All right, let's see, uh, let's do... The movie's at 9.30, so we have plenty of time. Okay, let's do AT&T, <laughs> but this is more Yelp stuff. Keep going. But it says that at and is launching a Yelp competitor, according to Forbes. <laughs> okay. okay. I've been on yellowpages.com. Um, this is called buzz.com. Hmm. So it's a social recommendations engine uh, in private beta. So you're not going to see much, unfortunately. I'll, um, see, the I'll see the But logo. it's interesting. So what it does is it uses your contacts to help you figure out things that you would like. So you can either poll your friends by saying, hey, what's the best sushi place in Santa Monica? Your friends can write back, kind of like the way a lot of people already use Facebook. Um, or you can let the site do the work for you, so it'll come up with places it thinks you'll like based on your friends' ratings, uh, GPS data, and also experts who have chimed in uh, for that local area. So it's still in closed beta, but uh, AT&T wants to tap into the $4 billion local search advertising market. Wow. Um, Did you see City Search just launched City Grid just, today, yeah. I think, or yesterday or something? I think, it sounds yeah. kind of similar. I wonder what the difference uh, I is. I don't know. Cause I'm not, Everybody I'm not, is drunk on local. Local yeah. makes money. Yeah. Local, nobody's really made a great local yeah. product except for Yelp, perhaps. City Search had the last one that was pretty great. Uh, Yelp is obviously a lot better on a feature set. Um, there, there's two things here. Uh, number one, AT&T is completely incompetent. Uh, they can't even keep their high-speed network up. Uh, so I don't expect them to do a great job with this. That being said, this is a brilliant move on their part, and I'll tell you why. There is a lot of money to be made in the application level of mobile phones. Mm -hmm. That's why I invested in Goala. That's why Foursquare is killing it. I have another mobile investment I'm doing. There, the application level for mobile is going to be a boom. Why? People are going to spend as much time on the Internet when they're mobile as they do when they're not mobile. You'll spend eight hours in front of your computer probably a day, and then four hours in front of your mobile. Or if you're a kid, you'll spend eight hours mobile and four hours in front of your computer because you'll be at school and mm -hmm. you'll be doing that when you're supposed to be learning. So <laughs> this is a great sign for entrepreneurs because it means AT&T is getting in the game to make services. It, this will fail, and then AT&T will actually go buy something that is successful and buy some management that knows what they're doing in this space. Now, I don't know any of the details of this. Maybe they already hired some genius to do this. But my, and they did buy a great domain name, so I give them credit for that. But, and the website looks okay, but I doubt highly that a homegrown application inside of AT&T is going to work, especially not the first one. Is it really buzz.com? Is that what it is? It is buzz.com. So, I mean, a, it's, a, it's really an awesome good. domain name yeah. they probably paid $18 million for. That's a really for. good name. Can somebody do a search and figure out if they paid for what they paid for that? It might be on uh, really Sado or Cedo yeah. or whatever. But, um, but this local sort of uh, aggregation of, yeah. of everything is, is really where it's, I mean, there's another one, uh, on, I forget what it is on the phone, but it, it's like buzz meter or something. It'll just tell you like what's hot around you. I mean, yeah. that, yeah. that idea of trending around you locally is, yeah. is uh, really where it's at. at. I was going to uh, say, Bing, Bing, they Bing, bought, Bing Maps, uh, Bing Local. Yeah, uh, and also you bought <laughs> the Twitter stuff. So 
You guys yeah. spent $10 million or $15 million on the Twitter deal, reportedly. <laughs> Should bring in that live data per year. Uh, I know, I you did no some kind of a deal. Wait, wait, we have a relationship Were you Twitter, involved yeah. in the Twitter deal, yes or no? Uh, was I involved? Yeah. In the sense that I knew it was coming? Uh, yeah. Yes. I did. Okay. Yes, but you yes. weren't involved in negotiations or anything like that? No. A guy named Wayne Thorson was involved oh, in negotiations okay. just about four hours down from now, me. Now, you, so you guys get to pull in the live feed we and do. use it. We get, uh, yeah. what's that called? Firebird. Uh, Firebird. Fire hose. Hosebird. Fire, hosebird or fire yeah. hose. Something like fire that. Hose. The fire hose. Yeah, yes. but there's some different. There's a cooler name for it. Oh, really? It's like Hosebird. Oh, it's like their or name. Like bird they, Hose or I'm sure. Bird Hose. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, we, we get that. So anything that happens real time, we actually pull in. Right. The, the, the cool thing, I think what you, you were alluding to earlier, is that um, we don't just like slam them onto a page when you do a search. The, the, it's Harley outside. Yeah, um, we actually take all those. This tweets. week in Harley is this the next show. <laughs> oh, sweet! <laughs> we actually take all the tweets we get in and, and, and dedupe them. Take out a lot of spam, a lot of the retweets, which is ah, cool. I but see. the cooler thing, I yeah. think, is that we actually. What do you do in Twitter? You either kind of say, you know, here's where I'm at, or you share, or here's what I'm thinking, or here's what I want to talk about. You share a link. So what we do with the Twitter search is we actually uh, look at all the links people are sharing across all the tweets. And then bubble up those top shared links when you do a, a like a, a keyword search for. So iPad. yeah. And now so, yeah. is that you guys doing that, or is that's that your partnership us. with Riot, with Riot? Yeah, one Riot. That, that's all. That's us. you guys. Okay. Yeah. Actually, Yahoo has one Riot. Oh, Yahoo yeah. has yeah, one yeah, Riot. Yeah. 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 So that is a good idea. Yeah, I like that one. Um, I like that one a lot. And then, how do you get to Twitter search? Bing.com slash Twitter. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not you, you don't really have it in the main interface we don't, we yet. We don't fire it yet on the SERP, no. So when, when you, you just gonna... do a regular search, it doesn't come up yet? Uh, no. We, we will, we'll fire off if you do some of the more prominent Twitters, you know, they'll right. actually fire yes, off. Yes, I know that line there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But as far as, uh, no, we haven't integrated it into the core SERP yet. Why not? You're still trying to figure we're, out we're what that is? still tweaking it. What we're, the value proposition? Yeah. Well, that, and like, when do you fire it? And, and, and what, do we, what, do, what do you fire? Like, some folks have just started putting real-time updates into the results, and honestly, I think it's You know what, noisy. though? This, look at this. I just did pound twist. I went to bing.com yep. slash Twitter, and I did pound twist, which is our hashtag. And it says top links right. Share shared in, tw in tweets, and it actually nailed it. You deserve to be fired was the one we played earlier. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Uh, that, no, it's USB, no iPad. No, you're USB, no iPad. Uh, it's really slick. I, I love. I mean, that is pretty I awesome. This, this, uh, uh, this is all I use for search now because it's it's uh, honestly uh, it's actually more helpful for me to figure out what's going on and then have to read through a bunch of OMG, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, Stefan's awesome. The really interesting thing about Pound Twist too now is that people are using the Pound Twist hashtag not just for the show but for anything entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. It's become sort of like if you're into startups, do if, if it would be of interest to start up to the startup community, do that, which I kind of like. I mean, but then there's some people who are sort of jerk offs who are like spamming it, but whatever. No, that's always going to happen. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, yes. I should own the pound twist. I should be able to. You can't. If, if Steve Jobs owned Twitter, if he bought, remember there was that rumor he was going to buy Twitter? If he did, he would basically say you'd have to get your hashtag approved before <laughs> using it. That would be the equivalent. Can you imagine how absurd? Okay, one more Probably. new story. One more. You're doing okay. good. You Let's have good see. stories. That yeah. okay. Easy, Let's very see. common to uh, bowl. Let's see. Do you want to talk about Square? Ooh, is the I like Square. Like the I mean, it's not game manufacturer or mobile payment guys. Yeah, the mobile payment. Okay, okay Jack. Uh, Square or iCurrent? It's a new startup. Ooh. Let me hear about iCurrent. Okay. I know I know about the Jack's thing. Let me hear about iCurrent that. is so it's another startup taking a shot at personalized news. Uh, their pitch: you don't have to visit all these multiple. I mean, it's everyone's pitch. You don't have to stop <laughs> visiting multiple news sites, email newsletters, RSS feeds, and start pages. So this page acts as a personalized newspaper front page. Uh, presenting relevant articles from more than now. Here's their thing: they have like 27,000 partners, uh -huh. uh, newspapers, magazines, websites, and blogs. So I guess it's more than just sort of like a news site. Um, there's channels developed by iCurrent editors on a variety of topics. Uh, but here's the thing I don't like, and this is why I can't talk more about it: is because you can't go to the site and check it out. You have to sign up to even see what they have to okay. offer. So you can't even search. Is I have like, it up here. Let's pull it up for. Am a I? Is that right? I mean, I can't. I couldn't. Yes. So okay. Number one. This idea wa is from 1996-97. It hasn't worked for 15 years. It's not going to work in year 16. Number two, if you call your website I anything or E anything, it's going to fail unless you're Steve Jobs. Uh, number three, if you use the Photoshop effect of like circling stuff like that on a website to explain it, you're going to fail. Uh, if your partners are big newspaper companies, you're going to fail. This is terrible. Nobody wants this product. And I'll tell you, the, the, the worst part about these products is that they want you to do some incredible amount of work to then get an experience. Well, that's what editors are good at. 
That's why people read Engadget or TechMeme or whatever. There's some editor there who is doing the curation for you. I don't want to go see uh, uh, Goodfellas and I decide what order the scenes are and who plays what part. I don't want to write this. I don't want to write the screenplay. I don't want to do the lighting on Goodfellas. That's why Scorsese exists. The reason the, the New York Times has editors, the reason Engadget has editors, the reason TechMeme has editors, is because they do that filtering for you. They will do a better job for you because that's what they do all day. I'm not going to build the perfect newspaper for me. Why should I? That's why I'm paying a newspaper. It's right. the worst idea ever. Whoever these people are, you have to stop wasting money now, turn this website off, or <laughs> redo it and make it a personal device for measuring, make it an iPhone application for measuring the amount of current your house is using. Or That's your what I thought it was when you said Which it. is what I thought it was. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. an iCurrent. Oh. This is the current that I'm currently thing. using. Right. So the name right. has potential. Your domain, this is domain. the <laughs> best part of this idea is the most inadvertent one, which is they happen to have a domain name that says to me, personal monitoring of electricity. Um, the people who are running iCurrent, the investors in it, stop the hemorrhaging of cash. This project will be gone and never work. We'll never get any traffic. I hate to throw the cold water on it. You haven't even seen the product yet. I can tell. I, <laughs> look, look, they're showing it through the periscopes. You can look at it through the binoculars. You know okay. what? Like, if you're making people All look right. through binoculars yeah. at your product, there might be something wrong with it, okay? Yeah. Uh, check, uh, when's the last time you checked your My Yahoo? I mean, <laughs> it, people, well, you know how many percentage maybe, of people yeah. no, set I know. up it's, My it's, Yahoo? It's under 1% actually net, personalized. Uh, I know. What was it, Netflakes, Page uh, Flakes? Page Flakes. And Net, net Vibes. Net Vibes. Net Vibes. Those products were the most point innovative. Cast. Point Cast? Oh, point Cast was, was, was yeah. wet, way negative day, one. Yeah. Screen Saver? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. But I mean, wait, hold on a second. Page Flakes and Net Vibes were the new versions of this. I Google yeah. was the new version yeah. of this. They were extraordinary. People had an incredible time. They were putting up widgets. People were making widgets for it. They were moving them all around and then you didn't hear anything about it. Nobody is talking about page flakes or Netflix. Why? It's a very niche product that appeals to 1% of the internet users. It will never become a big product. And the reason is people are lazy and they would like it's true. And they're busy. You know, I got a kid now. I'm not gonna set up my newspaper. I got enough things. I'm changing diapers. Yeah. I shook your hand too. Yeah. Nice table. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the story on Square because I don't want to leave my pal Jack out. Okay, so Square, uh, you know, basically they they uh, announced their list of investors this week. So ever the mystery was sort of revealed, the people behind it. You really got to rub salt in the wound. <laughs> <laughs> what? Jason wasn't on. It's a little list. sensitive. Oh, keep going. Okay, yeah. sorry. Um, a little sensitive. So if you don't know what Square is, this is that mobile payment system that turns uh, pretty, pretty much dollars. any iPhone into a credit card that's, reader. That's pretty cool. Uh, can accept credit cards. Uh, Genius. Small businesses. PayPal anyone. IPhone. Little hardware device that plugs in the bottom, right? That's yeah. It, yeah. I, I heard it actually. There's one that plugs in the in the. Oh no! It's, it's top. actually it's, it's, it's it in the three and a half inch. Jack. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah, that's it's right. more. It uses, uh, yeah, that's right. That's it's right. That's right. Anyway, you can use it with more phones than just the iPhone. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Eventually, not right now. But anyway, so but not the tablet. Oh, no, no, it does, does three and a half inch. Actually, it does have a three and a half inch. So, three you know what? The, the one thing you can use with the tablet out of the box. <laughs> Square. <laughs> oh, my God. Done. Okay, so the list of investors. Hold on a second. Uh -oh, I, we, have, uh -oh. I have to I have pull up, my, pull up my, my laptop, please. No Flash, <laughs> no iPod, the WordPress blog is up. No Flash, no iPad.com. <laughs> they got com. the domain. They Look got the domain wow. up and running oh. the before the end of the show. Before the end of the show, it's up and running. I didn't think the DNS servers would be... That's really that quick. quick too. I didn't. Well, it is, yeah. And it, they <laughs> link to actually, the. They, they probably call the iCurrent work guys. And network and they solutions actually. I think like it's network solutions. Through, yeah. Yeah. Wow, Some guy at Network Solutions in his, in his, in his office watching yeah, a show. That is so There you funny. go. Let's we'll so start throwing out random domains and see how fast they can get put up. That's that should be the next power. Show. And look, right. here's no USB, no iPad. He actually got the dot com running. <laughs> <laughs> that is ridiculous. Wow. And you know that somebody is. But wait, wait, hold on. Is this an old one, though? Because it says January 4th, 2010. Look at the top. Oh, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. Well, hold on. I think they probably have their clock. Uh, it's Connected Geek. Up. It's super yeah. fan Connected Geek. We know who he oh, is. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, I think, um, I think, I'm going to guess Steve Jobs' email is Steve J or S Jobs at Apple. If he were to get that in his email box, that would be torturous to him after what I've, I did on Tuesday by accident. Can you imagine now Steve Jobs has like his whole week is like Jason Calacanis, Jason Calacanis. <laughs> Who the hell is this guy? He's going to gonna punch me in the face at the knee conference. Oh, it's great. We should, we should let you stream that too. So yeah. not to rub salt in your wounds, but this, yeah. Yeah. this right. sounds like a story. dinner at your house on a Friday night. Marissa yeah. Mayer from Google. Good friend of mine. Uh, Dennis Crowley, or Crowley, how do you say it? 
from Google, Tal- from uh, Foursquare. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Kevin Rose from Dig. Good friend of mine. Uh, Biz Stone from Twitter. Good friend of mine. Sean Fanning from Napster. Yeah. Esther I, I Dyson Sean. from uh, I met her once in Good New York. She worked at CNET. Like we overlapped for like a week. She Esther Dyson m- didn't work at CNET. Oh, she you, oh, she did. They bought release uh, 1.0. 1.0, 1.0. Yeah, and yeah. we had stacks of her old uh, That's right. like yeah, issues. News, yeah, yeah, in the office. But uh, anyway, so so it sounds like uh, anyway. So this is uh, Mayor and Crowley's uh, first investment. So that's yeah. it. It's uh, the company's valued to be uh, uh, rumored at uh, rumored to be valued at forty million dollars. Uh, it's an epic valuation, uh, and I it think is, uh, you know obviously he's doing what any good entrepreneur coming off a hit would do, which is get paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what people do with the record deals. That's what entrepreneurs do. Um, I came off Weblogs Inc. We raised a lot of money for this business, and thank God we did because we have tons of runway. And good for him. He'll have tons of money. I think he raised ten million. Uh, on a 30 pre-money, 40 post, so 10 million for 25% mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. company. It's a pretty good deal in this market. Uh, yeah. I mean, not as good as the deal I got from Mahalo, but anyway, um, <laughs> it's not a competition in any way. But, uh, different no, market, different market. I'm really happy for Jack, he's a friend of mine, and I, wa- I wanted to invest, I wasn't able to get in. It's very t- difficult, I know, when I did my rounds, it's very difficult because so many people want to invest right. in whatever the hot deal of the moment is. It just, you can't get everybody in. It's just too much work. There's too many people. So I understand. I don't take it personal. Uh, coming up next is This Week in Android uh, and the three she- C shell videos, uh, which we will cue and play between the shows while we do the set change. Uh, thank you uh, to Bing, Ustream, DNA Mail, WebSpy, and PowerVPS for sponsoring the show. Five sponsors sold out. Uh, the show is sold out for many, many months for the year. Uh, it's been great. It's given us the ability to really uh, make a great studio and put on a good product that I think we're all pretty proud of and having tons of engineers here to, to make it right. The new website's coming. You may have seen it on my blog, calcanis.com. Uh, Dwayne did a great job on Ask Jason. Andrew uh, did a great job on Jason's Shark Tank for uh, Maroon Door. And uh, Dwayne, uh, who did Ask Jason, did a great job at Modders Dash Inc. Uh, Superfan Scott Simcoe is now working um, on the This Week in Startups blog, you're going to want to go to thisweekinstartups.com and actually read. He does five, ten posts between each show. And you can get in there and post in the comments. Join the community. Have your uh, words heard. Post a comment. Do what's right for yourself and for your country. Um, Stefan, thanks for being on the program. You're welcome. I can't go until I announce the theme. The theme. This, the, the t-shirt. Oh, oh, there's a the t-shirt theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys we, give away. We, we tell all of our, all of our, yeah. all of our watchers. You all the watchers to good, give away. Good yeah. blog postage today. Yeah. Twist got a nice shout out. We did. We, yeah, so you ask, no, you get all these people to do all this craziness for a Bing t-shirt. Well, it, so here's what happens. So, so does the Bing t-shirt have a Zoom in it? <laughs> it depends. Uh, <laughs> so the, people on, give people, away a Zoom with people, the t-shirt. We, we gave away Windows 7 a few weeks ago. We, we're giving away a Brian Solis' new book today, actually. Brian Solis. I have a copy of Brian Solis' holding up this chair. Well, come on. It's, no, it's a great book. I'm it just is kidding, a good Brian. Book. So anyway, so we so we we just announce a theme, and I basically people send in a query which exemplifies that theme, and then arbitrarily, without any kind of rules at all, I just pick the ones I like the best, and we right. give T-shirts away. So they get a Bing T-shirt. Bing T-shirt. But this week, it the, this you, week the theme is uh, airports. Airports. So give me because I was just in a lot of them. Right. So give a yeah. theme that, and this is you get. Dozens of people, yeah, yeah, we to, to it. participate. I, in this. Yeah, and they send them in. It just it all it takes is a you know a query string, get a Bing t-shirt. and we send them a Bing T-shirt. It's like simple. It. It's fun. People love the T-shirts. Put a zoom. I'm, can we put a zoom well, two in it, maybe a zoom two? <laughs> <laughs> I like the zoom two. So airports. That's a theme. But thank you for having okay, me. Okay, airports. A lot of fun. Uh, it's great to have you on, and it's great to see uh, you guys innovating. Uh, love both companies. Uh, it's great to see competition in the space again. It's great to have a. You know, a, a vibrant number two fighting and advancing, and you can tell Google's got a uh, fire lit under their butts, and they're taking it seriously, which is great for consumers, and it's great for everybody. It's sort of like the NBA now with Kobe and LeBron. Like, you know, it's like worth watching yeah. again. And when they weren't, it was worth watching. And I, everybody's like, oh my God, will LeBron finally face Kobe? And it's like, oh no, it's Dwight Howard and Kobe, or it's Kobe versus Kevin Garnett. Anyway, it's exciting again. It's exciting uh, to have, well, and also in the mobile space, you know, the battle going on, music space, laptop space, netbook space, tablet space. It's awesome. Rich, thanks for doing the news. Great job. Thanks for uh, having thanks me. Thanks for bringing the huge tech meme audience. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, wonderful insights as well. <laughs> good, good insights. <laughs> and uh, so uh, coming up next this week in Android, a uh, special guest call with Mashable. Mashable will be on the program, which is great. And the app of the week, um, 
I won't disclose what the app of the week is, but it's very cool, and you'll see it there. And we will see all of you guys next time on This Week in Startups. Let's see some seashells. Spiked out, I could trip a referee. Tell by my attitude that I most definitely leave from. No.